Adams Division matchup from Montreal. An emphasis on defense was the norm during the 80s in a black and blue Adams Division. Known for a grinding style of play, the Adams was not the place for a free-willing, offensive-minded hockey player. To play in the Adams, you needed a strong heart, a head up, and a road map out of the corners. That was then. This is now MVP candidate Pat LaFontaine. Alexander McGildy, one of the league's best, 62 goals to lead the league. Vincent Dampfus, Stefan Laveau, and Kirk Muller. The 90s version of the Flying Frenchman, the Canadian, number one again. ESPN's National Hockey Night from the Forum in Montreal, Canada. Tonight, the Buffalo Sabres come to town to take on the Canadiens. Hello, everybody. Gary Thorne, and delighted to have you with us. These two teams played last night in Buffalo. Montreal came away with a 6-4 win, but in the final seconds of play, they ended up with some fighting majors. They weren't the first in that game, and it may set the tone for tonight. Neither team is happy with the way it ended last night. That kind of play we're used to seeing in a black and blue Adams division. And our own Jim Schoenfeld with Buffalo and with the Boston Bruins used to play in this Adams division. And when it came to going to the corners, Jimmy put a few people in and made them part of the boards. Jim Schoenfeld is with us now. It's a lot easier, more to say, less to do, and less black and blues. Jimmy, this has been that kind of division. I'm just thrilled they found some color footage of my <laughs> career. I thought it was all in black and white. Well, that's half your career right there. Yeah, we I just guess looked it at is. It. That's right. They're, they're the highlights, <laughs> running people into the boards. It has been a very close checking defensive division. It seemed the best defensive team, the team that could grind it out the most, was the team that emerged victorious out of the Adams division. However, that team failed to go on to win Stanley Cups, thus the transition to a flowing offensive style of play. Buffalo has made the transition with LaFontaine and McGillney, and the Canadians have made it. They've acquired some players, Bellows, Dompoos, certainly Kirk Muller has helped in that. The defensemen are getting more involved. Teams realize they have to score goals, play sound defensively, but they have to score goals if they're going to win the Stanley Cup. Well, Jimmy, sometimes the numbers don't bear up the things that we like to think are happening. In this case, they do, as the light has been lit in the Adams division more than ever in the past by a couple of teams, one of which you would not expect. Well, the Buffalo Sabres, they have moved from eighth last year in scoring to first in the National Hockey League at 4.39. But who would have believed the Montreal Canadiens would be part of the top six? Well, they are. Number six overall in the league in offense. And tonight, these two teams go against one another. A great twosome. LaFontaine and McGillney against the number one team in the National Hockey League right now, the Canadiens. The face-off when we come back. Jack, it's yours. All right, thanks very much, Gary Thorne. And uh, with Tom Meese getting a rare Saturday night off, I'm lucky enough to be in the seat along with the usual cast, Al Morganti, Bill Clement, and uh, gentlemen, we find these two teams at opposite ends of the uh, playoff standings in the Adams Division. If the season were to end today, yes, it'd be Montreal against Buffalo in the first round, and the uh, Sabres trying to make up ground on the Bruins, and as for the Canadiens, well, they have the top overall record in the National Hockey League. Their 39 wins lead the league, and uh, that's a club with a lot of smiles on their faces. They're dangerous, very dangerous right now. They're dangerous because they are happy. Why are they happy? Well, not only are they winning, but now this year under Jacques Demers, they're encouraged to join the offense. Last year, Pat Burns said, you've got to play more defensive hockey. If you've ever had to play a sport as a kid and you had to practice without the puck or the football or basketball to get in shape, you know how boring it is. That's what it's like playing defensive hockey. As soon as the puck is introduced into what's happening out there, you get happy as an athlete. And Montreal Canadians are like all other hockey players. They're just big guys that act like kids a lot. And they're happy because they're being encouraged to play offense, the defensemen as well as the forwards. Well, on the other side of it, Al, you have Buffalo and they're four points behind Boston going into tonight's game. And for them to make up ground, they're going to have to go against all current trends. All current trends says they should play every game at home in Buffalo because on the road, the Sabres are simply a different hockey team, alarming the difference in record. But notice the power play rank. That's top to bottom, first to last in power play. And of those nine wins on the road, three at Hartford and one tie at Hartford. And when you even focus down a little bit more to what they've done against Montreal in the past, the last four seasons, including this season, three wins in Montreal. So that's a really tough thing to overcome. But with Grant Fuhr in goal now, they can play a different style. They can pinch in a little. They can take some chances. They can become more offensive on the road. They can make mistakes with Grant Fuhr and have him cover up behind them. All right, so the Sabres against the Canadians. That's tonight's matchup on National Hockey Night. And we have got a great night of action coming your way. At first, we'll look back to uh, this day's action in the league. It began at 11 a.m. Eastern time. 
And yes, Cam Neely making his return known in Boston. Stick around. Great day of action already on the ice, and we begin our quick look around the league in Detroit with the Blackhawks visiting the Red Wings. Dirk Graham going around Tim Sheldon and scoring, and the Blackhawks win it 2-1, solidifying their hold on first in the Norris. Washington and Boston, this is in sudden death. Cam Neely with the hit, puck goes over into the corner. Adam Oates feeds Vladimir Ruzichka, and Rosie knocks it in, and the Bruins win 5-4, sudden death. Islanders against Philadelphia. Steve Thomas waiting and going off the water bottle for the score. Islanders win it 3-2. And Tampa Bay against Pittsburgh. The Penguins have won only one of their last seven. Rob Zamner beating Tom Barrasso, and they get out of it with a 3-3 tie. Here's some of the other action today. The Devils beating Ottawa. And Quebec already up on Hartford. 3-0 in the first period at the Colisee. Still to come on National Hockey Night, Bill Clement's analysis of the Montreal Canadiens and that young, hungry defense of theirs. Stay with us. National Hockey Night is brought to you by the Discover Card. It pays to discover the card that pays you back. And by Sports Green, fast pain relief and no odor. Well, the Whalers are on the board at Quebec. That game's now 3-1. Let's take a look at tonight's National Hockey League schedule. And the Rangers continuing their Alberta road trip up in Edmonton tonight. They had to settle for a tie in Calgary last night. Bill Clement, the Montreal defense. What do you make of it? They're young. They're not that big. They almost have to play offense because they can't grind it out playing defense. But they've got great mobility, and they're encouraged to get in the play. I'll show you what I'm talking about. This play involves J.J. Daniel. He's in good position defensively. But watch, Montreal is just going to dump the puck around the boards. What does he do right away? He peels over here to become an offensive guy, at least in his own end. Now, smart play here by the left winger on the side. You see him. He sees Daniel coming. So what does he do? Pulls out of the zone to give Daniel room to come up the board. So smart play up front. Daniel stops here. He, he just tries to make a play across. And he makes the play, and it looks like it's going to be simple. Two on two for the Oilers in this play. But watch. See Daniel up on the play. That's Jacques Demers style. Get up to the play. Look how far in he goes. Right to the crease. Doesn't come to him. But here's what I'm talking about mobility. Check this out. He's already skating backwards. He's got a 20-foot lead on this guy. He's pulling out of the zone. No sweat at all. So it's because of the skating ability and, and the mobility. And here his defense partner comes back and covers for him. But it's because of those assets, even though they are small, that they can compete in this league and they compete offensively. Well, if there are two guys who can make those youngsters sweat. They are Pat LaFontaine and Anna Alexander McGilney, and we're going to see those guys skating tonight. Let's uh, send it back up to the forum. The Buffalo Sabres getting set to meet the Montreal Canadiens. Gary Thorne and Jim Schoenfeld have the play-by-play -play from the forum. Jack, thank you very much. We are back at the forum where the entire crowd and teams are standing in a moment of silence for the voice of the Canadiens for 32 years, Danny Gallivan. He passed away yesterday at the age of 75, and for a young man growing up in Maine who loved hockey, every Saturday night it was hockey night in Canada. The voice I grew up with was Danny Gallivan. He loved hockey, and hockey loved him. He is really going to be missed. Goaltenders tonight, Grant Fuhrer will be in net for the Sabres. He was in goal last night. You see his record. That's his record this season with Buffalo. And at the other end, the man who's among the top five in all categories, Patrick Waugh, will make the start. He also played last night. They finish the game with fights at the 20-minute mark. It may carry over to this game. Pat LaFontaine against Kurt Muller in the faceoff, and we are underway. It'll be sent in deep and immediately Haller. Dump Schmelick at center ice. Cleared around a Himalayev. The Canadiens and Buffalo. They don't need to have back-to-back -back games to get it on. When they do have back-to-back -back games, it's just that much more exciting. We're underway. Mike Keane sends it in. Grant Fuhr going to the corner for it. LeClaire, John LeClaire out on this line with Kirk Muller. Holler got it, trying to hold it in. Could not as it was bounced on the faceoff. Will come outside the blue line. Sabre coach John Muckler adjusting his lines a little bit. We see LaFontaine starting without his partner, Alexander McGilney. 
And from the Montreal perspective, they think LaFontaine is the more dangerous of the two because the line of Muller, Keane, and Leclerc, the line that shut them down so well at even strength in last night's game, is out against the LaFontaine line right now with Himalev and Presley. Jacques Demers, Montreal Canadiens, with a victory last night, have 39 wins on the season. They are ahead of the Pittsburgh Penguins for the number one record. Most points gained in the National Hockey League. Rodgers got it, sends it ahead. Canadiens will control a very patient Montreal Canadiens team. They'll make very few mistakes. They wait for the turnovers, and when they do, they've got the offensive weapons to put it up on the board. Hemelab coming. He's got LaFontaine with him. Presley also on this line. Going back to get it, Patrick Waugh just left it in behind the net for and Donnelly could not get a piece of it. Cleared through center. On the near side, in alone, will be Bellows. Bellows tied up. Bellows shot and set it knocked away by Bodger. And a penalty coming up. And a power play will be coming up for the Montreal Canadiens. Brian Bellows keeps his legs going. He gets a little better body position on the def uh, Saber defender, Ken Sutton. And as he drives to the net, you'll see Sutton gets the stick in here. Bettles keeps driving his legs, gets a little bit in front, and Sutton has to hold the stick out for the hook. And that's the key to this Montreal team, Gary. They keep skating, whether they're on the rush or whether they dump it. The stick came up, caught Bellows in the face, and for that, the Canadians are granted their first power play. And did not take long to get there. 101 is the time of the penalty. Jacques Demers' team will go on the power play here and a chance for the Canadiens to jump on top at home. The Montreal Canadiens are 23-8-2 and two in games at home against the Buffalo team that's only won nine games on the road. They're 9-16-5 and five when they have been on the road. The power play for the Montreal Canadiens last season was eighth. This year they are at 18.4% effective. Not good here at home though. They have never been a team that's relied on the power play to get it done. Dampus in the corner, knocked away, controlled by Bellows. Bellows gets it back to Dampus, Muller in front of the net. They have Lehman, Gary Lehman working back, and a point score! Dampus dumped it in front, Bellows going by, one nothing Canadians! As the play sets up behind the net, watch for Kirk Muller. He's going to come in and take two Sabre defenders out of the play. There's Bellows wide open as Schmelich and Bodger got caught with Kirk Muller to the left of the Sabre goaltender, Fuhr. Out to Bellows, one times it under the pads of Folly, Grant Fuhr. You'll see Muller to the left of your screen, two defenders with him, and that leaves Bellows wide open. That's a familiar spot for Kirk Muller and a familiar role for Bellows. And Bellows leads the Canadiens now with 12 power play goals, 27 goals on the season. Bellows in his first year with Montreal after 10 years at Minnesota. He's a 30-goal scorer in and out, and it's a one nothing lead. It'll be played in. Grant Fuhr's got it. Grant Fuhr, last couple of games, has struggled a bit in net. Keep an eye on that tonight. Played a pretty decent game last night, but not the Grant Fuhr of old. The Canadiens putting the heat on. Todd Ewan moves in. Ewan got a good shot. Rebound. Fuhr makes the save off the blocker. Puck came to the side of the net. Keith Carney trying to get it out. Good not. Good pressure by the Canadiens. Grant Ledger played at the corner to McGillney. McGillney coming two on two. He's got Carney with him. McGillney looking. LaFontaine. LaFontaine. Deflected. Did not get it on goal. Ray knocked it away. Turns trying to get the shot off and can't. And the Canadiens will just clear it out. Sean Hill. Good pressure by Buffalo coming back the other way. Bellows picking up the goal. Dampus and Desjardins got the assists on it. And we'll get a slashing call coming up away from the action. Pick it up when we come back. Jack to you. Eight minutes and 19 seconds into the game. Quebec already had a 3-0 lead on Hartford. This is Matt Sundin turning Eric Weinrich inside out. Sean Burke had no chance on the backhand. It's now 3-1 Quebec. Gary Thorne, Jim Schoenfeld, let's you take a look at the league's leading scorer. There is Pat LaFontaine, who's moved ahead of Mario Lemieux. That was the slash by Don Poos. Roger wastes no time getting the puck in, getting on his horse. Both teams like their defensemen to join the rush, sometimes lead the rush, as Doug Bodger was doing there. When you get them involved, 
Good things can happen offensively. You get people out of position, they're going to have to pull you down, or as happened there, take a slashing penalty to slow the progress of Sabres Doug Bodger. And it'll be a slashing call. There you see the Buffalo power play. It's been where you are that matters, not who's on it. Amazing for Buffalo that had the best power play in the National Hockey League last year. To be seventh overall, you can live with that. But to be dead last on the road on your power play, that you can't live with. See what they do with it here against Montreal. Patrick Waugh able to clear it out of the zone. Howard Chuck will work back along the point here. They'll keep McGillney, of course, and Pat LaFontaine out there. Himalev will come out. That's the normal line Butler has used this season, both on the power play and otherwise. McGillney leads them with 21 power play goals. There's Himalev. Himalev racing into the corner for it. Sean Hill was with him. Off to McGillney. McGillney looking. Howard Chuck has got the shot. LaFontaine. Bodger. Shot. Anderchuk. Keen took it. Shaking his head. That hurt him. McGillney fanned on it. Desjardins trying to get it out. Cannot. It's held in. Mike Keen gets up. That shot shook him up. He stayed down for a moment. Bodger. Keen's up the top here on the defense. Shot by McGillney. Lug out. Ripped into the seats. Off the defenseman's stick. Eric Desjardins. You watch the Montreal defenders, they play a very tight box, a very well-disciplined box. They give their opponents the point shot and quickly try to get in line with a shooter. Keane showing good courage, goes down to block a shot, then after that Desjardins gets a stick on, deflects a puck into the crowd. They're a very disciplined power, power, or a penalty killing unit and rarely will you see them running around in their own zone. There you see the Montreal Canadiens bench. Kirk Muller heading back to the bench, working on the penalty killing unit. They are seventh overall, the Canadiens, and killing them off, and they are eighth here at home. Montreal Canadiens have given Buffalo only six power play goals on the season in their previous games, 27 chances. Comes back to Howarchuk, his shot deflected again in front to the corner, Himalev had it with him, didn't know it, Bodger picks it up, Bodger moves it to the top, they set up with the umbrella, shot LaFontaine, wow the save, LaFontaine in, scores! Pat LaFontaine, 1-1! One, one. Snaps the shot, then follows the shot to the net. Odeline is too slow reacting to LaFontaine. He comes in and puts his own rebound home. Wastes no time snapping that shot. And you'll see Odeline just get caught half a step. And if you get Pat LaFontaine half a step, he's gone. Good scramble in front of the net. Gary, in last night's game, the Sabre power play accounted for half of the team's scoring chances. When they are on, they are deadly. The road record has not been good. I spoke with John Muckler about that. He's not overly concerned. He feels once the playoffs start, the players will give what they have to give. They'll pay the price they have to pay to make this thing work in the road. He feels he has very capable people, and it's just a matter of having to put out the same effort on the road as they do at home. He's confident once playoff time starts, they will do that. Randy Wood sends it in. 40th goal of the season for Pat LaFontaine. He's picked up 16 of those on the power play, and the league's leading scorer has added another to his totals. LaFontaine now with 112 points. He's tied for eighth, starting the night in goal, second in the league in assists, and first in points. Mario Lemieux is due to come back next week. His radiation treatments will end on Tuesday. Adam Oates following right behind the pack. And uh, had an interesting comment Mario Lemieux made at the All-Star game with Pat LaFontaine. Well, Patty LaFontaine, he's jumped out into the scoring lead. Mario says, I'm going to spot you a little bit. And he says, I'm going to come back and I'm going to catch you. And Patty said, love to see it. Just like every other hockey fan would love to see Mario back on the ice. We may see him back right here on ESPN next week at Madison hey. Square Garden when Pittsburgh takes on the New York Rangers because he may well come back next week as soon as he's finished up with that radiation treatment, which is going to end on Tuesday. Cleared ahead at center. Yes, nobody got it, and a Canadian down. De Pietro is down. Ewan takes the shot, and they'll have to come out and take a look. And now the fight starts on the far side. Gord Donnelly taking exception for the Buffalo Sabres, trying to put Ewan onto the bench. That's Todd Ewan, who's just getting back tonight after missing three games. And Gord Donnelly of Buffalo going at him. Now we told you to pick up where it left off. Todd Ewan missing three games with muscle pulls in his back. Coming back in the first period, this ain't going to help the back. That, that's certainly not 
not going to loosen it up, that's for sure. After the uh, finish of last night's game, it's no surprise to see Ewan in the lineup. He is a legitimate league heavyweight, as is Gord Donnelly. Both guys had a good scrap there, and Donnelly's quite upset yet as he makes his way to the penalty box. It has the potential to be that kind of night. Canadians and Buffalo tied here at 1-1. Take a look along the boards. There's Big Ewan coming in. I'm not sure where Di Pietro gets hit. There's the stick coming up right there as Wood tried to go by him. Randy Wood dumped the puck along the boards and he tried to skate past Di Pietro. And this is the way the game ended last night. There's LeClaire and Rob Ray squaring off. There are the two goaltenders. Prior to that, Grant Ledger was with Vincent Dompus and was taking advantage of him at that point in time. Sure came out of the, or I'm sorry, Gord Donnelly apparently is going to get an instigator call here on the fight. Todd Ewan is staying in the penalty box. So Donnelly has been lost to the Buffalo Sabres. We'll wait for the official call on that, but you can tell how he felt about it. Well, this is purely accidental here. Wood is trying to get past Di Pietro. Accident or not, when the tempers are high as they were to finish last night's game and start tonight's game, someone is going to make another pair pay the price. So Ewan's out. He knows what he's here for. He's got to make a physical presence for the Montreal Canadiens. And Gord Donnelly is a willing combatant. And it doesn't take much to get those two guys started in an altercation. Di Pietro got up and went to the bench being attended. One of the questions is whether the, any of the officials, and any of them, if they saw it, can tell the referee, the two linesmen can help him on that high sticking call, but I'm not sure anybody saw Di Pietro get hit. We're going to have to wait here as the officials will confer amongst themselves and also with the captain, Jacques Demers, behind the bench, and there you see Don Koharski, the referee for this game, with Pierre Shampoo and Gerard Gauthier. And as soon as they've decided, they'll make the announcements. We want to remind you, if you'd like a great basketball whack midnight snack, tonight we got one for you. Big basketball game, number 23, BYU against number 11, Utah. Taking a look at Josh Grant right there, who leads Utah in a matchup tonight. And there's why it's such an important game. Utah and BYU, 14 and 1, with the overall records on the right. That's coming up at midnight right here on ESPN. Full house here, of course, at the Forum, as you would expect, but particularly for a game as important as this. And both these teams know that somebody else involved in the race in the Adams division, namely the Boston Bruins, came away with a victory today. So that matters to the standings and to the outcome of tonight's game. Let's check in with Jack Evans. All right, Gary, the Flames putting the bite to San Jose pretty early. Al McInnes, the blast from the point. Paul Ranheim turns and beats Wade Flaherty. 44 seconds in, it's Calgary 1-0 over San Jose. The announcements on the penalties just being made now as the teams, especially Buffalo, unhappy with the call here because they clearly are going to get the short end of this. Last night, Buffalo came out of the first period of Buffalo and clearly established a physical game and outplayed Montreal, but had only a 2-0 lead. The second period, they couldn't sustain it. Buffalo did everything they could do in the first period to run Montreal out of the ring and played possibly as good a period of hockey as they played all year. The second period started, the Canadians were still there. The Sabres said, hey, wait a minute. You aren't supposed to show up for this period. We just threw everything we could throw at you. The Canadians just picked away, picked away, ended up taking the momentum of the game away from the Sabres and went on to a victory. And that, of course, the officials are well aware of, including Don Koharski, who's over there talking with John Muckler right now about the calls that have been made. Muckler knows in this division he needs to establish the physical presence, knows they tried it last night, didn't get all they wanted, that's the high stick that I don't think anybody saw. I don't think they made the call on that. What happened afterwards was the reaction to it by Ewan, who went over against the board, sent something to the bench, and the next thing he knew, he had uh, Donnelly on his back. Those are the standings coming into tonight's game, with Boston having won in overtime today. Quebec, of course, still very much in the hunt for first place. The first two get home ice in the playoffs. Numbers three and four make it to the playoffs as well.
clearly those are the four teams that are going to be in Montreal, Quebec, Boston, and Buffalo. The question is who's going to play whom where. Well, I'll tell you what, I do not think the Buffalo Sabres want to meet the Montreal Canadiens first round. Montreal has dominated them in years past and seems to have their number again this season. Buffalo, a five-minute major called on the high sticking, so they did see it. Power play now underway. schmelik has got it. It's a two-man advantage for Montreal for up to a minute 44 here. Two-man advantage. Muller's got it. Muller back to Desjardins. Shot. Save made by Grant Fuhr on Gary Lehman. Pushed away by Bellows. Five on three. Power play. Shot. Save. Fuhr rebound. Skips over Lehman. Desjardins came back to get it. Could not. Cannon dumped it in the middle and Bodger will send it out. So the five-minute majors up on the board, along with the first penalty that has a minute 20 left on it. So a long two-man advantage for Montreal. Kirk Muller brings it in, sends it behind the net. Gary Lehman over to get it. Lehman sends it up for Danfus. Danfus and Desjardins along the line. Lehman. Lehman looking. Muller got dumped in front of the net. Good pushing and shoving down low. Shot on. Saved by Fjord. And skips it up into the seats. From the Forum in Montreal, 1-1 with the Canadians on a two-man advantage. Great goaltenders give their teams opportunities to win hockey games. And here, Grant Cure doing everything he can for the Buffalo Sabres. This is his third save on this flurry. A big slapper from Dampus from the point. He deflects it up over the crowd, over the glass, into the crowd. Two-man advantage. Kurt Muller wins the faceoff. Centered and Fjord reached out and knocked it away from Bellows. Played by Gary Lehman. Lehman shot. Saved by Fjord. Picked up by Ledger. And Ledger clears it out. Let's bring you up to date on the penalties now. Donnelly got the instigator and the five for fighting, so he's automatically out of the game in the instigator. Wood got the five minutes for high sticking, and Ewan uh, got five for fighting. So you end up with a two-man advantage for another 34 seconds here for the Canadiens. Danfus had it blocked by Bajor to Desjardins. Desjardins circles around. Lehman came to the top, reflected right to him. Centered, Bellow shot! Danfus somehow missed it. Desjardins holds it in. Gary Lehman. Lehman in, in, shot, save! Fjord! With 15 seconds left on the two-man advantage. Grand Fjord is no stranger to a lot of activity. When you play on a team that's a free-willing, highly offensive team, you're going to get chances, but this is exceptional goaltending by Fuhr. The Canadians passing the puck through the seams, and there's a good shot by Lehman. The Canadians have to get someone in Fuhr's face. There's no stand standing beside it when that shot's coming from the point, unless it's going to be a pass you can deflect. Fuhr has been able to see these point shots, therefore he's been able to come up with the initial save. The Sabres have done a good job of clearing the rebound, or he has deflected it away himself. Good play by Bodger in front of him that time who knocked it away. Kirk Muller moves in to take the face off. Dave Hannon with him. 15 on the two-man advantage. 3.15 on the five-minute major. Desjardins will chase it down at center. Game is tied at 1-1. We've had two power play goals here in the first period. Picked up by Bellows and Pat LaFontaine. Cleared out of the zone again by Hannon. Desjardins chasing it. We're now down to a five-on-four power play. Still Canadians with a lot of time. 2.55 left on it. But here's one of those situations in a game with the Buffalo Sabres can kill this off, the whole thing. It's a big pick-me-up for the Sabres. Not to allow the Canadians to score in a two-man or in a five-minute major. It all came at the same time. Danfoos trying to hold it in. Schmelich got it up against the boards and LaFontaine goes down on top of it with the game tied at one. Jack? Gary, Calgary's now up 2-0 on San Jose. Theron Fleury breaking through center zone. He goes all the way in. It's a 2 on 0 Wade Flaherty way out of the goal. The pass scores the goal. Brett Ashton gets it. It's 2-0 Flames. Back to Gary Thorne in Montreal. Jack, thank you. We are tied 1-1 here. Still 2.36 left on this power play for Montreal. These two teams on the season now with Montreal winning 6-4 last night. The advantage goes to Montreal three games to one. Two games they've played here. Montreal won 3-0. Patrick Waugh had the shutout. Montreal won the other game here by a score of 4-2. Buffalo's only win this season at Buffalo, an 8-2 win against the Canadiens. Power play continued. Di Pietro bellows the pick. Drops it back, intended for Bellows. Banked up in the air by Schmelich. Centered in front. Shot saved by Fjord! Grant Fjord and Di Pietro. Outstanding save as Di Pietro went in alone on him. Had the chance. 2.08 left to go on the power play. Canadians from out of their own end. Break by Di Pietro coming back to Gary Lehman. Lehman in, Lehman looking. Bellows scores!
Sabre defender, slides the pass over, quick break out here coming up, the pass going to come up, Di Pietro right here to Lehman, now watch him look off the Sabre defender, good fake, down he goes, and there's Bellows for the empty netter, as Fuhrer has no time to react to that pass, bang bang, on the stick, off the stick, back onto the stick here. Brian Bellows has two power play goals in the first period. He now has picked up 28 total on the year and 13 power play goals. And Bellows gives the Canadiens a 2-1 lead. This coming on that five-minute major. With a major penalty, you keep the penalty minutes up. You get as many goals as you can get during that five-minute period. Puck was hit with a high stick by the Canadiens. The officials say it was intentionally hit with a high stick. So the faceoff goes all the way down to the Canadian end. This is the initial pass. Di Pietro, Lehman, look, head up, head up, faking the Sabre defenseman. Sutton goes down trying to block it. Grant Fuhr has no chance as Bellows sets up very nicely on the forehand. You have a winger playing the offside, so they get that pass at a good angle. And he puts it into the empty net. Pass, Grant Fuhr. Gary Lehman, another offensive acquisition. Brian Strudlin going over to Calgary. Lehman, 29, a 10-year veteran in the National Hockey League, being picked up by this Canadian team, which, as we mentioned, at the top has so fired up their offensive play. Bellows, two goals. First one at 116, this one at 648. Lehman and DiPietro pick up the assists on it to give the Canadiens the 2 1 advantage. Sweeney moves in to take the face off against Kurt Muller. Still a minute 41 left to go on the power play. Players moving into the circle. Face off one back by Sweeney. Ledger trying to hold it in, can't. Gilbert Dion lost it. Ledger hit by LeClaire, picked up by Kirk Muller. Muller dropping it ahead to Dampus. Dampus with Dion and LeClaire in front of him. Setting up on the power play. Five on four advantage to Muller. Kicked away from him in the corner. John LeClaire out of St. Albans, Vermont. Couldn't control it and it ends up in the seats. All kinds of action going on in the National Hockey League. Games played this afternoon and a full set going on tonight. We'll keep you posted on all of those as we roll along here, both from the Forum in Montreal and also for the uh, people back. And our Budweiser scoreboard shows you what's going on. Kirk Muller moves in. Pat LaFontaine will take the face off against Muller. Still a minute 20 left on the power play. LaFontaine took him a while to catch up with Mario Lemieux. Lemieux has now been out 22 games. And Pittsburgh's gone 10, 9, and 3 without him. Pat LaFontaine did catch him, just passed him. We'll try and continue to add points to that lead leading scorer's position. Bodger cleared it around. LaFontaine there. Can't get it by Dampus. Behind the net. Controlled momentarily. Bodger poked it away. Desjardins able to hold it in. LeClaire drops it to Dampus. Dampus centering. Far side. Trying to draw the penalty, I think, was Gilbert Dion, who went down. But uh, clearly under more of his own force than anybody else's. 55 left on the Montreal power play. Tipped by Ledger over Fuhrer's stick. Ledger back to get it. Banged up in the air. And we'll get a whistle. That's going to be called, I believe, on icing. Face off all the way down by Waugh. With Matthew Schneider out of the Habs lineup tonight, the power play pointmen have been forwards both times. Gary Lehman was on the point earlier, and that time Vincent Dompu. So Demers showing good confidence in his forwards. The Sabres have a tremendous penalty killing unit, number one in killing penalties, and they can also score a lot of shorthanded goals. Speaking of Canadian injuries, there you see it. Brunet with the thumb, Schneider out with an ankle, and he's probably their best defenseman. Carbonell, one of the best defensive forwards in the National Hockey League. Dennis Savard, we all know how he can dangle with a puck, and Dufresne is out with the knees, so the Habs are playing extremely well, although they have a lot of key people out of the lineup. Incredibly well. They've gone eight, one and one in their last ten, coming to tonight with a four-game win streak. Even though they are missing, have been missing six regular players. They got one back tonight in Ewan. Still on the power play, 33 seconds. Devin Haller sent it into the corner. DPA throw trying to kick it in. Got it by Presley. Ledger put the hit on the far side. Down to 24 left on the advantage. Lush, Malik able to clear it out. Buffalo has done an outstanding job in killing off these penalties, including the five-minute major. They've only got 14 seconds left on it. They've given up the one power play goal. But if that's all you give up, and you're trying to kill it off, it'll work. Tip wide of the net in front, Lehman. Back to Bello. Bellows looking. Bellows moving in. Penalty is over, and we're back to even strength. Centered shot. Did not get it on goal. Deflected out deep. Again, DiPietro was there. And now Buffalo's got him back. A McGillney coming up ice. McGillney brings it in, but he's offside. Buffalo complaining that there should have been a penalty as Presley got hauled into the zone. Canadians up 2-1.
Bellows has picked up two for Montreal. LaFontaine scoring his 40th for Buffalo, but Buffalo's going to be shorthanded again. Presley complaining to Don Koharski about the non-call that he thought should have existed for interference. Gets an unsportsmanlike conduct at 8.59. And that's after his team had killed off what could have been a game-ending penalty. Uh, two minutes with a two-man advantage, five, man, uh, five minutes with a man advantage. They do an exceptional job allowing only one goal. And now they've got to kill another two minutes. Destroys their offensive flow and puts them in a hole as far as wanting getting the people they want to get on the ice. Playing all shorthanded here in this first period, the Buffalo Sabres, but they are only down by a score of 2-1. So the Canadians go back on the power play, Kirk Muller. One of the things that happens to Montreal with a power play not as effective as it might be, teams sometimes are willing to give Montreal power play chances in return for playing the body and making a statement. Bobby Corkin took the hit on the far side. Puck held in, though. Dampus has got it. Dampus drops it to Bellows. Bellows back to the point. Shot deflected out in front by Kirk Muller. Rebound, Muller diving for it. Bobby Corkum gets the stick up. We're going to get another call. Corkum on the far side was battling Patrice Brisebois. And he got him with a high stick. Another two-man advantage. Unless they match it up, and I don't think they're going to. Boy, it's time for John Muckler to call a timeout here and settle his troops down. They're playing with reckless abandon and absolutely no discipline at all. First of all, you have Presley take a talking penalty. You're already a man short. You take a high-sticking penalty. Discipline is a key factor in this game, and the Sabres are showing absolutely none of it. Donnie Lieber closest to you, one of the assistant coaches. John Muckler behind him, the head coach. And the Buffalo Sabres for the second time in this period, in fact, in the first half of this period, are going to be at a two-man disadvantage again with a minute 16 remaining on the first penalty. Bobby Corkum goes at 9.43 for high sticking. As a result of all this, the shots are 7-2 in favor of the Canadiens. Now we go to a five-on-three power play. Our Budweiser scoreboard updating you on other games around the National Hockey League. Kirk Muller moves in on the faceoff against Hannon. Canadiens able to control, hold it in the zone. Brisebois working at the point. Patrice Brisebois. Lehman. Lehman looking in front. Muller standing in the slot area. Back for Brisebois. Brisebois trying to center it through Hannon. Couldn't. And it's set out. Good play. Doug Bodger in the right position. He keeps his stick in the passing lane, eliminating that cross-ice pass that was coming to Bellows. Brisebois got it in. Lehman looking. Lehman will set it up. Bellows on the far side. Muller in the middle. Kurt Muller trying to center, did. Bellows couldn't knock it down. Gary Lehman. Lehman back to Brisebois. Buffalo back in that pocket. Very tight. Brisebois save Fjord and the cover. Again, the Sabre defenders doing a good job allowing Grant Fjord to see that shot. Brisebois one-times it, but Fjord has it all the way, and if you're shooting on Grant Fjord from the top of the circles and he can see it, you aren't going to score many goals. There's Brisebois coming back from Dompus. There's the one-timer. Fure sees it all the way, makes a save, and importantly smothers the rebound. Very important. It's great to have your goaltender quick like Fure, who will jump in that loose puck because if you don't, you know the Canadians get possession again, and you've got to go through the whole rigmarole and try to get it off with a two-man disadvantage. Schmelich, one of the penalty killers, going back to the bench as Sweeney moves out. 32 seconds remaining on the two-man advantage. Bob Sweeney acquired off the waiver wiper from uh, Boston, off waivers. We'll take the face off against Muller. Muller, who won it. And again, Montreal will get it set up. They've got 26 left on the two-man advantage. Hill working the point now. Hill, Dampus. Dampus back in the middle. Kevin Haller, out of the shot. Fuhr the save. Rebound clipped to the near side by Sweeney. Kevin Haller able to hold it in. They go back to the point. Diving Dampus. He cannot get it. Patrick Waugh comes out of net at the other end. Waugh has done more moving the puck up than he has making saves here in the first period. He Three loves to keep it that way. Yeah. <laughs> Three seconds on the two-man, and it's over. Now a five-on-four power play for the Canadiens. Forty seconds left on this penalty. Buffalo really getting away with a lot thus far in this game. Him 11 a sense game, third out, Muller. 
price. He goes where you have to go to score goals, and here he's going to pay the price as Doug Bodger comes in, moves him out of the way, catches his skate on the net a little bit, and down he goes. You know anything close, if you're a Montreal Canadian, anything close is going to be called. Fear has a puck, there's no need to even get your stick out. Kaharski has given the Sabres penalty after penalty. He's going to call it, it's human nature, to give the other team a break a little bit. He'll get the stick out and puts the halves in the penalty box. Hill goes out on the interference call, coming at 11.24. So we'll skate four on four for 19 seconds. Bellows has two power play goals for the Canadiens. LaFontaine the other from Bodger and uh, Himalev. Giving the Canadiens the two to one lead they have right now. Lots of action. Ledger shot, wild a save. Desjardins picks it up. Four on four. Mike Keane, Keane sends it in by McGillney into the corner. Sutton back to get it. Double squeeze by Keane. Ledger. And Ledger will move it out. And a power play right now. A minute 41 on the power play for the Buffalo Sabres. McGillney moves it in. Centering LaFontaine. Couldn't get it to it. Comes back to Sutton. Sutton to LaFontaine. Himalev and McGillney with him up front on the power play. Locked down low in the corner. Good defensive play made by J.J. Daniel. And Desjardins able to clear it out of the zone. Well, John Marco said his bench would be shortened early in this game. He hasn't had much choice. <laughs> in fact, both these teams have gone with about the same players on their specialty teams. And that should be an icing call as Brisbois touches up on the far side from the floor of in Montreal. ESPN's National Hockey Night. Canadians leading the Sabres in one. Canadians leading it here. It's been a specialty team first period and a power play underway right now for the Buffalo Sabres. Howarchuk from behind the net. Gets it away to LaFontaine. Drops it off for Bodger. Bodger will send it in. Himalev, McGillney and LaFontaine working with Howarchuk and Bodger. Patrick Waugh tried to bounce it around and a player's hurt. Breeze Waugh. The Canadians, Patrice Guisbra grabbing onto his face. He... Patrick Waugh, his own goaltender, I believe, caught him in the face with his goal stick as Waugh was trying to clear it around. And even though he has that shield on, it didn't look like it helped very much. It got up underneath the visor. Patrick Waugh, not much activity this period. He's going to clear this puck. Now watch the stick follow through right there. And the toe of the blade, that stings. That stings an awful lot. Catches Brisebois underneath the shield. And he's back on his feet. He's on his way to the bench, so I'm sure we'll see him return. But man, that's got a smart. You're coming in, so you have the double collision. You're in motion towards the object that's going to hit you. And a good, strong follow-through by Patrick Waugh. Fells one of his own teammates. That stick is so wide. So strong. Muller against LaFontaine. 51 seconds left in this Buffalo power play. Muller, a great faceoff, and able to win it again. And the Canadians get it out of the zone. Bodger back to get it. 2 1 game. Buffalo trying to get it tied up here on this power play. Had it blocked by Muller. Muller's alone, short handed. Bodger with him. Muller waiting for some help as they changed up. Got it. In the middle, Desjardins and Keane were both there. Could not control. Deflected Desjardins. McGillney to LaFontaine. McGillney in front of him. LaFontaine. Traces Himalev was cutting in. Not quite enough on it to get him. Down goes Muller. He had grabbed, though, the Buffalo player stick. Howarchuk drops it to Bodger. Looking, 13 left to go on the power play. LaFontaine. LaFontaine to Himalev. Wah covered, knocked it away. Howarchuk shot blocked as it hit a skate and cleared. And that'll do it. And the power plays over. And once again, for one of the solid times in this first period, we're back to even strength. 6.30 to go. In the first, Canadians leading it 2-1. The shots are 9-3 in favor of Montreal. Evan Haller going back to get it. They wave off any icing on it. Haller plays it on the near side. Haller bangs it up for Dion. Dion couldn't get it. Chased down. Balanger knocked away from him to Dion. Gilbert Dion shot score! Gilbert Dion does a tremendous job of protecting the puck. It's up in the air. He's going to cradle this puck. 
Get body position here as he moves it in with his glove onto a skate. And then he snaps a low shot past the Buffalo goaltender, Grant Fuhr. But that's not an easy thing to do to control the puck the way Dion did. Coming in full flight. You'll see it come up here as Belanger is on the attack. There it is from the glove to the skate. He wastes no time. And he beats Grant Fuhr through the legs. Only 22 years old, Gilbert Dion has given the Canadiens a 3-1 lead. Dion putting it in his 14th of the season. And a penalty coming up immediately on Todd Ewan. And in the corner, the sticks get up. Skating away from dangers, Brad May not wanting to draw any more penalties. As he and Todd Ewan were staring each other down over there. The penalty had already been called and uh, Buffalo's going to go back on the power play again as Odelin goes to the penalty box along with Todd Ewan. Odelin and Ewan going and it doesn't look like anyone from the Sabres as Brad May backed up, called Kaharski, said, look, this guy wants to fight. I don't want to fight. And he draws the Canadians into a two-minute minor. So the Sabres are going to get an opportunity in the power play again. Wow. And it's going to be another two-man advantage this time for Buffalo. There's Dion coming in, controlling the puck. And you'll see Fuhr going down, and it beats him between the legs as he doesn't get down quickly enough. A play like that, sometimes you just stand there. That puck will hit you when you're on the move. The legs are always open for that second, and that was a split second that the puck got through on. He is the much younger brother of Marcel Dion. Marcel's already had his career. Gilbert, at the age of 22, just starting his. And what a career Marcel Dion had. Third leading scorer of all time, and he played in a market like a Montreal or a New York or a Toronto where the game was a big deal instead of spending so much time in L.A. before hockey was the vogue thing to do. His name and face would be plastered all over as far as endorsements go. But he had a quiet career and quietly did his work and did it extremely well, and he'll be in the record books for a long time to come. Two-man advantage now for the Buffalo Sabres as the Canadians lead at 3-1 with 5.59 to go in the period. McGillney comes away with a puck. The league's leading goal scorer, 62 for Alexander McGillney. Howarchuk, Howarchuk and Flodger. McGillney, M11 LaFontaine. Right in on top of Wah, makes the save. Rebound deflected off the defenseman back to Bodger. Howarchuk faking it, Bodger. Boy, both these defenses staying way back here. Shot save, Wah on LaFontaine. Patrick Wah, fourth in goals against, fifth in save percentage, third in wins, starting his 48th out of 65 Canadian games this season. The Sabres moving the puck around well. Here's what they wanted, LaFontaine shooting off the pass, and Patrick Wah not only makes a save, but hangs on to the puck so his team can regroup. They can try to win the faceoff here. Of course, Kirk Muller will be out there to take it. Gary, there's five and a half minutes left in this period. I don't think there have been more than two minutes played where Kirk Muller has not been on the ice. He is, of course, and not along with his regular line, a penalty killer and a power play man. The penalties Ewan got for tripping and the auto line got for unsportsmanlike conduct, both coming at 14.01, giving Buffalo the two-man advantage. Canadians taking plenty of time on the draw. They really wanted Muller to move in to take it, but will not get it that way. Eric Desjardins will go against Pat LaFontaine, and LaFontaine wins it. Back to Bodger again. Two-man advantage Sabres. LaFontaine, Bodger, play tic-tac. Howard Chuck, McGillney. Howard Chuck, McGillney. Look how close he is to the net with a two-man advantage. He's virtually on the doorstep, could reach out and touch LaFontaine. Howard Chuck faking, Himalayev cutting. Bodger, shot, wide. Muller went down to block it, and cleared out of the zone. Canadians, J.J. Daniel. Kirk Muller has emerged as Mr. Everything in this Canadian team, the heart and soul player of the team. Everybody thinks an awful lot of Muller in Montreal. Bodger's got it. Bodger drops it off. Howard Chuck looking. Howard Chuck back for Bodger. Intended for LaFontaine who got it by Muller. Diving Bodger in shot. Wah! Makes the save. And hangs on. 49 seconds left on the two-man advantage for the Buffalo Sabres. When you look back 
in this game, that goal by Dion could be a big one. Here are the Sabres with another chance, and Waugh with another save. Goaltenders are taking turns making spectacular saves as Bodger lets it rip. The Canadians had so many opportunities with the man advantage, did not score, did not score. They got the one goal and they had the five on three. Back to even strength, Dion gets the goal, gives the, Can or the, the, the Canadians a 3-1 lead. And that could be a big goal because the Sabres were starting to come to that point, took a little wind out of their sails, and now the Sabres have an opportunity to cut it to one goal. Montreal will use their timeout. One 30-second timeout per game in the NHL. They're doing it right here. Jacques Demers wants to protect that 3-1 lead. He wants to be able to keep his number one penalty killers out there. Since they've been out there most of this first period, he's going to draw them an extra breath by using the timeout right here. With 4.48 left to go in the first period, shots are now 10-6 in favor of the Canadiens. Got a great show coming up. I think you're really going to enjoy on Outside the Lines tomorrow. Bob Lee, 8 o'clock Eastern Time. Shaq, sudden impact. This is going to be a look at the great one, Shaquille O'Neal, that you usually don't get. Bob Lee will be behind the scenes. ESPN has traveled with him for two weeks on the road, at home, on the road trips. And you'll have a chance to look inside a special Shaq attack. That's 8 o'clock Eastern right here on ESPN. Pat LaFontaine and Kirk Muller. 49 seconds on the two-man advantage. Muller would like to win it clean. LaFontaine would like to scramble it. He wins it clean, and the Sabres are on the attack. LaFontaine from Howard Chuck. Able to hold on to it. McGilney on the near side post. Howard Chuck. Bodger, LaFontaine the shot, deflected wide off a skate. Howard Chuck holds it in, 30 left on the two-man. Bodger, deflected again by Kirk Muller. Back to get it is Howard Chuck. Howard Chuck, Bodger, the shot through the screen. Muller blocked it again. LaFontaine. LaFontaine moving in. Back to Howard Chuck. Shot, saved by Waugh. Rebound, clipped away off the boards. Held in by Bodger. Patrick Waugh in the crease, can't find it. Score, LaFontaine! Waugh had it, lost it, and LaFontaine buried it. 3-2, Canadians. Patrick Waugh made an exceptional save on Dale Howardchuk. Very sneaky shot. Howardchuk gets it away so quickly, but then he fell asleep with the puck beside his net. He should have just fallen down on this, put his glove on it, and froze it for his penalty killers. Anytime you're killing a penalty, face-offs in your own end are good. It gives you a chance to regroup. But we'll see the puck come to the side of the net. Just grab it with your glove, Patrick. The Sabres keep whacking away. Sweeney gets it out. LaFontaine for the payoff. And we've got ourselves a one-goal game. He had 46 goals last year, finished fifth in goal scoring and 15 overall. He now has 41 goals. Pat LaFontaine, 17 of them have come on the power play. And he has brought his Buffalo Sabres back to within one. That was a five-on-three power play goal. And both penalties are now over. So the Sabres were able to get one out of the two-man advantage. Now have cut the lead to a 3-2 Montreal Canadian lead. Ledger got it up on the near side, bounced back into the zone to Sutton. Sutton being challenged by Gary Lehman. Lehman worked it away. Good play by Lehman to Danfu. Lehman created that. Shot from the point. Fjord the save. Rebound. Lehman save. Fjord. Bellows center. Knocked away by Sutton. And Sutton can't get it out. Bellows holds it in. And down on the ice is May. Buffalo Sabres, Brad May. And they're upset about this as well. Well, there's a Buffalo Sabre in a lot of pain, Brad May, and he's a recipient. As he comes out here on Brisebois, he's going to give him a stick in the face. Now, Brisebois is going to come with a two-hander. Wham! Right across the right foot. And May is in pain. That was the old axe chop right there, boy. Wow. That could fell an oak, that chop. I'll tell you what. It did. Brisebois stays out. Nobody saw it. Everybody was looking the other way. Sweeney on the face-off with Bellows. Play it out. It's taken up by Dampus. Dampus stolen by Presley. Dampus got knocked out. Brought up on the left wing side. Brisebois had moved in. Presley goes to the corner with him. Brisebois is all over the place here in this first period. Canadians leading 3-2. 3-12 to go in the first. All kinds of activity here in this one. The last goal picked up by LaFontaine. Sweeney got the 
the assists at 15 of 55. Neon's goal prior to that, Jose Belanger, Jesse Belanger from Haller, brought in by Bellows. Bellows centered off Gary Lehman. You can bet every check's being followed through in this game. Lehman, who can stick handle, dies. Short save. Your rebound. Bellows scores. Oh, put that one on your VCR. Gary Lehman doing an all for the Canadians. Here he is with a puck. You talk about new life. A former 50-goal scorer with the Leafs. What a great move there. He eludes two Sabres, gets the shot on. Kerr's going to make the save. The Jardins come in from his point position, and it comes right back out to Bellows. Good positioning. The halves just all over the Sabres in that sequence. Bad defensive. Bad, bad defensive zone covered by the Buffalo Sabres. And Furich is caught out of position. He's down to make the save. He tried to clear it. Further pulled himself out of position. And the top half of the net is wide open for Brian Bellows. Latour de Chapeau! Brian Bellows gets the hat trick. And the Canadiens are up 4-2. to two. Bellows with a huge first period. But what a play by Gary Lehman to set it up. Howard Chuck cleared it out of the zone. Played near side Hannon. Hannon shooting it in for Himalev. Cut off by Desjardins. Desjardins and Himalev collide. Up got out of the zone. It was kicked in on the far side by Keith Carney. Carney of the Sabres trying to hold it in as he battles. He did. Hannon spinning around. Shot deflected. That one went off a Canadian skate on the way in. Held in Howard Chuck. Dumps it in the corner. Hannon back to Himalev to Howard Chuck. Shot, he missed it wide. Went for the right shoulder and didn't get it. And he ends having trouble clearing the zone here. Ed Ronan finally got it out. Grant Fjord back to get it. Minute 46 left to go here in the first period. It's a 4-2 Canadiens lead, and you're seeing the offense of this Montreal Canadiens team. LaFontaine in. LaFontaine in. Wow, run into. Shot blocked. Ronan gets a stick on it on the second chance by Pat LaFontaine as he was going after the hat trick. Muller had it stripped from him at center. LaFontaine fell down as he tried to get it up. Ice breeze while intercepted. LeClaire knocks it down, gets hit by Sutton. Banged away by LaFontaine twice. LeClaire spun it around. Keane at center. Keane turns it up ice for the Canadians to LeClaire. John LeClaire. Bodger got a piece, but not all of him. LaFontaine. Far side. And Bobby Corkum taking the hit as he collided with Mike Keane. And on the far side, Sean Hill and Pat LaFontaine collide during the line change by the benches. One minute left to go in the first period. Sean Hill, the high flip into the zone. Has been an exciting first period. Lots of action, lots of passion in this one. To the corner, DPA throw to the point. Himalev, Himalev twice trying to bang it by Hill. Can't. Hill shot it up against Bodger. Sweeney comes over. Canadians changing up. We'll get the puck back at center. And we'll complete the change. Audette took a run at it. Couldn't get it. Played by Sutton. Sutton, not a lot of room. Just dumped it up in the air. DiPietro swung it in. Sutton right back up to the point. Robert's moved up to hold it in. Todd Ewan, DiPietro, and Robert's. They've got the muscle the Canadians do out on this line. Behind the net, Sutton tied up DiPietro. Ewan centered. In front, Ewan couldn't get a stick on it. Himalev comes the other way. Ten seconds left. He's got Donald Audette with him. Audette moving in. Oh, checked away. Last minute, Jesse Belanger. Pope checked it away. Belanger who has picked up his first National Hockey League point on an assist in tonight's game. The Habs are going to come away with a hooking penalty here to Desjardins as the Sabres busted out two on one. He was trying to get back, and he had a tug on the Sabre forward. Funny little message set there. Last 15 seconds of the period, Demers sends out his two heavyweights just to remind the Sabres before they go into rest for 20 minutes. If you want to start any rough stuff, I've still got my two big guns that come on the ice. They're here. One of yours has already been thrown out of the game. Only 4.8 left to go here. There is Pat LaFontaine. Big first period for him. As he has come up with a couple of goals. We'll bring you up to date on all the scores around the National Hockey League. Scores and highlights and Cam Neely back, of course, for his second game with the Bruins. Picked up another power play goal. May and Breezebois facing off against each other. This Keep is an eye on Linesman moving There's in. McGillney skates by. Don Koharski telling him to just get back to the benches in order to get out of the way here. The Lions are going to have to move in. May moved over. May started jawing with Breezebois the minute he got onto the ice, and he's 
was standing opposite him. Brisebois, of course, didn't back down. I would keep an eye on those two as the game progresses. Good first period, especially by the Canadians who put their offense to work. They lead it 4-2. Jack? All right, Gary, terrific stuff from the four of six goals. We're only 20 minutes into that one. Lots of other action going on in, in the National Hockey League this morning, this afternoon, and tonight. Let's begin in uh, the province of Alberta, where the Rangers go north and face Edmonton tonight. And it is 0-0 at the end of the first period after five straight starts for John Van Beesbrook. The Rangers go with Mike Richter in goal, and he's been pretty hot so far. San Jose against Calgary. And in this one, it was a rough night for Wade Flaherty so far. In his first NHL start, Paul Ranheim turns, knocks in the rebound to give the Flames a 1-0 lead. Then midway through the first period, they're in Fleury on the go, 2 on 0, oh, and it's an easy one for Brett Ashton. Calgary, second place in the Smythe Division, four points behind Vancouver coming into this game. Minnesota's at St. Louis. Dave Gagne in center zone, 70 feet away. Curtis Joseph sees it, but he cannot corral it. It busts through the catching glove into the goal. Little motion on that puck. Minnesota seven points up on St. Louis with two games in hand for fourth place in the Norris division. Hartford against Quebec. It was 3-1 Nordiques into the second period, but the Whalers coming back. Nick Kiprios on the doorstep, jams it in, and it's now 3-2 in the second period. Quebec five points behind Montreal for first place in the Adams division and two games in hand. All right, we got a lot more coming your way on National Hockey Night, including a review of this afternoon's action in Montreal tonight. It is 4-2 in favor of the Habs after the first period. Brian Bellows already has the hat trick for Montreal. Welcome back to ESPN's National Hockey Night up at the Forum in Montreal. The Canadians have a 4-2 lead over Buffalo, and that game's only in the first period. This afternoon on Causeway Street, Washington against Boston, and that is Cam Neely tipping in the blast from Ray Bork. Neely second in his second game back in overtime. Neely with the hit. That's Adam Oates in front. Vladimir Rizicka, a magician with the stick, and the Bruins win it 5-4 in sudden death. Four out of the last five games for Boston. They've gone to overtime, and they are unbeaten in their last five. Washington's seven-game winning streak comes to an end. Tampa Bay against Pittsburgh. Penguins been struggling of late. Joey Mullen, though, a good day for him. The blast goes high, stick side past Wendell Young. Mullen, two goals and an assist, picks up his 900th career point. Tom Barrasso stops Rob Zaminer once, but not twice. And what do you know? The Lightning get a tie out of this one. The Penguins just one win in their last seven games. In their last two, a loss to Ottawa, and then a tie against Tampa Bay. Islanders against the Flyers. It was 1-1 in the first period. Steve Thomas. Is that Velcro on the stick or what? Then he finally hits the Gatorade bottle. And the Islanders are up 2-1. Mark Fitzpatrick. Humongous in the goal. Glove save. Robbing Greg Hoggood. 2-2 in the second. Dominic Rousseau. Where's the puck? It's just barely getting over the line. And the Islanders win it 3-2. Al Arbor's 1,500th game behind the bench. The Islanders are now within two points of the Rangers for fourth place in the Patrick Division. Chicago at Detroit, late first period, 1-1. Steve Smith, the shot, Dirk Graham on the rebound. Eve Racine displays his displeasure. Graham would score two goals in the game. Ed Belfour bricks up the front of the goal, stopping Steve Eisenman once and twice. 27 saves for Belfour. The Blackhawks win 2-1. Chicago, four straight wins now. The Blackhawks lead Detroit by five points in the Norris Division, plus they have a game in hand. The Senators, well, they're now 0-31 on the road. Claude Lemieux with three assists for the Devils, and it's third place now for the uh, New Jersey guys as they leapfrog the Rangers. They are one point ahead of New York. In Boston, Bruins fans are saying the season has just begun because Cam Neely has returned after a long absence. Neely comes back and scores a goal in his first game, and we'll talk about what his return to the Bruins means when National Hockey Night continues. Well, Cam Neely, in many ways, is the heart and soul of the Boston Bruins. He had missed 93 consecutive games, but earlier this week, after an awful long wait, he was back. Neely, of course, tried it for nine games last season, and the knee just wasn't right. But his hard-grinding, hard-hitting style powers the Bruins. In his return to the ice, he pots one. 
And uh, to the Bruins, the return of their two-time 50-goal scorer is a real emotional boost. But beyond that, it does something for that team strategically, doesn't it, Phil? Well, you try to put a player's return into terms, I guess, that everybody can relate to. To me, Cam Neely returning to the Bruins is the ultimate position upgrade. He is their strongest winger. He is their biggest winger. He's their most physical. He's also their top scoring winger. That means he is their best all-around winger. When he goes back into the lineup, you drop the worst winger out of the lineup. That's why it's the ultimate position upgrade. The only potential problem I thought for Cam Neely might have been his timing. If the timing's not there and you bog down, you don't score when you come back for a while, perhaps that can affect you mentally. So what does he do? He comes back and scores in his first two games back, so the timing will not be a problem for him. He'll have it all back, and he'll have his confidence there in a couple of weeks when the timing comes back. Al Morganti, does this turn the Adams division into a, a legitimate three-team race with Neely, Neely's return? Oh, it certainly does. You've got Ray Bork there anyway, but Cam Neely coming in, it drives him up another level for the playoffs. In addition... Uh, Bill said it's the ultimate position upgrade, but it's a domino effect with the Bruins because now you've got Joe Juno, you put him at center on another line. Sure, they can load up with Oates and Neely and whoever is going to play on that side. You can have you can have Kvartlinov now on that side where he wasn't so effective before. He may become a prime-time player now with Neely on that wing. They have all kinds of ways they can go. If you shut down one line, they'll come at you with another line, and there's always the threat that they put the three together again and have a terrific line with Juno on the wing, Oates and Neely. It gives them much more ways to uh, attack you in the playoffs. You can't shut them down anymore. Bill Clement, we talk about the primetime players, the big names, the guys who get, get the humongous headlines, but how about the guys that get the little agate type? The other guys, perhaps the ones that we have overlooked or maybe are in the shadows. They're in the shadows to a degree. Terrific players, and I've picked four of them. Uh, Mark Recchi works in the shadows of Eric Lindros uh, because not only of Eric's size, but he gets all of the ink everywhere. But those are superstar stats, 97 points. Pierre Turgeon from the Islanders will have his best year ever. He's got 96 points already. Craig Janney with 68 assists is number three in the NHL in assists. Everybody's forgotten about Craig, and he doesn't even play with Brett Hull, so his, his assist total, I think, would be higher if he played with the scorer. And Brian Bradley for the T Tampa Bay Lightning, 37 goals with an expansion team. Boy, you don't know how many goals that is unless you've tried it. He is one behind the all-time high for goals by an expansion team player. Gilbert Perot had 38 in 1970. Brian Bradley's had a terrific year, and nobody knows about it. Well, everybody knows about the Pittsburgh Penguins, Bill, but one guy, Larry Murphy, I don't think gets anywhere near the credit he deserves. Everybody looks at Chelios, he's going to win the award for best defenseman. Larry Murphy's had, again, a steady season, a great season, plus 20. Up in Quebec, everybody's looking at the great scores. Boy, what talent there. A guy that's made a huge difference, Mike Ricci, the leadership role that he's playing. Mike Ricci's going to have a bigger role as we go down into March and into the playoffs. Ricci will turn into the leader they've not had since Dale Hunter. Meanwhile, I think if you look at Washington, Peter Bondra has turned into a very steady kind of player that they need. It's a pretty balanced attack. They've got the huge defense. Bondra comes through with, he's got 11 goals, either tied games or put them ahead. And in goal in New Jersey, I think Billington's had a pretty good year. And in Vancouver, Whitmore as a backup has really come through and made them a steady team. See, there are a lot of those guys. Yeah, yeah. Billington and Bondra are going to be pr uh, prominently featured in the plays of the week a little bit later on in ESPN's National Hockey Night. Yes, as we continue, uh, we remind you that the score up in Montreal, the Habs up 4-2 on the Buffalo Sabres. They're playing up in Edmonton, too. We'll have some Rangers-Oilers highlights when we continue. National Hockey Night on the 5th of March, Friday. The Penguins against the Rangers. New York is in action tonight up in Edmonton. The Rangers settled for a tie in Calgary last night. And Kelly Bookberger looking to beat Mike Richter. But Richter has been tough so far. 0-0 in the second there. It's 4-2 in Montreal. National Hockey Night is brought to you by the new Subaru Impreza, What to Drive, by Gillette Sunsor and the new Gillette Series, Gillette, the best a man can get, and by Budweiser, the king of beers, who reminds you, friends know when to say when. Gary Thorne, Jim Chantel, great to have you with us here in Montreal at the Forum, built in 1917 for hockey when they opened up here. Canadiens have been around since 1909, 23 Stanley Cups, and second period ready to go. Canadians still have a minute 55 to be short-handed. Desjardins went out for hooking at 1955. The Buffalo Sabres are back at the power play. Officially, they've got Buffalo at 2 for 5, Canadiens at 2 for 6 on the power play.
power play in that first period. Shot on, wide a rebound, McGillney. McGillney was tied up by Daniel, still has the puck. Daniel moves it out. A 4-2 lead for the Montreal Canadiens. Save, Wah, rebound, covered, still loose. He never got a hold of it. Power chuck, shot, deflected by Sweeney. McGillney shot, gloved down in front. So we start the second right where we left off as little line cleared it out. Oh my gosh. Bodger takes it back in behind the net. Brian Bellows, hat trick of the first period, first of the season, the eighth of his career. Only the third hat trick Montreal's had this year. The other two picked up by Damfus against Pittsburgh and Hartford. Those are the only hat tricks the Canadians have. Pat LaFontaine has picked up two goals also in the first period. Dion, the other one for the Montreal Canadiens. Brought in by Howard Chuck. Sent it in the middle. Gary Lehman intercepts. Lehman had an outstanding first period. Bodger able to knock it down over to Howard Chuck. Tip to LaFontaine. 43 on the power play. Fontaine cross ice McGillney in front Sweeney. Couldn't get a stick on it. Howard Chuck again. Howard Chuck to LaFontaine. Specialty teams have worked virtually all of this game. Seven minutes, nine seconds of five on five hockey in the first period. Shot by Howard Chuck, deflected wide, bouncing off McGillney to LaFontaine. McGillney lined it up, couldn't get it off as Haller took it away. Bodger holds it in, 18 left on the power play. McGillney back to the point. Howard Chuck in, Howard Chuck, McGillney, Bodger, saved by Waugh! Patrick Waugh, two saves on Bodger. Penalty down to four seconds left. Winding up, Lehman gets it out as Howard Chuck was off balance, penalty's over. The Canadians did a good job killing the penalty until they got the puck in their stick. Once they had the puck, instead of clearing it, they gave it to the Sabre defenders and got themselves in all sorts of trouble all over again. And Patrick Waugh came up with the big saves. It'll be chased down, Grant Fuhrer having to play it, had Dion moving in on him. Audette swung it around, couldn't get it out of the zone. Canadians able to hold it in. One line shot saved by Grant Fuhr. And he had some help in front. Audette. Audette clears it to the far side. Sabres trying to get out of the zone here. Richard Smellick had trouble with it. Couldn't do it. Back down the middle. Canadians three on two. Tipped in front. Fuhr behind the net watches as Himalev picks it up. Checking line at the opportunities for the Canadians. Audette the other way. Patrick Wow to get it. Audette ran him. Penalty coming up. Audette. Put the check on Waugh, who retaliated. And that's going to be one on Dion. Dion came out of nowhere. The stick's up as Hannon moves in for Buffalo. Bodger now goes after Dion. The fight is on between Autoline. Lyle Autoline is up against the boards in one fight. Bodger's going at it with Dion. Well, here's the situation. You got Odette, who's been out of the lineup. Some controversy in the paper. A writer writing that John Muckler is not playing Odette because he doesn't like French-speaking hockey players. There's Autoline giving it right now to Carney. The comments are untrue. They put Odette in the lineup. He's trying to make something happen, so he gives Wah an extra bump. And in the National Hockey League, when you bump someone's goaltender, you're going to pay the consequences. The Habs do what they're supposed to do. They make Audette pay. The Sabres do what they're supposed to do. They come in to Audette's rescue. And what ensues is what you see on the ice right now. This will be entirely up to Don Koharski, the referee. If he wants a third man in, he's got a couple. If he wants to call two or three fights, he's got those if he wants to. Take a look. Patrick Waugh was the man that the team was trying to protect. And uh, coming in late on the play was Dave Hammond right there. I'll tell you something, though. The arm of Don Koharski did not go up until Patrick Waugh retaliated. That was the first arm. He did not initially signal a penalty on Audette for hitting Patrick Waugh. It was only when Waugh whacked him. But we'll wait and see. I'm not going to make any guesses at this call. There's Audette coming in. Waugh gives him one. Boom. Hits him on top of the head. We can't see Kaharski here. There's Odeline. It all right into the goaltender. League rules would have Audette get a penalty. You're supposed to do everything you can to avoid contact with the goaltender. He did not do that. He went out of his way to make contact. Waugh reacted to that. And there's the rest, folks. 
That was Gilbert Dion who came flying out of nowhere. Watch Dion come right here. Look at this. <laughs> Boom. And but uh, that won't take a back seat. He's a courageous little guy. Well, they had all kinds of penalties, we said in last night's game, a back-to-back -back series. You expect that to happen, especially when it's a division game and as hot a rivalry as this one is between the Buffalo Sabres and the Montreal Canadiens, with Montreal winning the game last night by a score of 6-4. We're going to get a bunch of penalties out of this. And as I said, it's up to Koharski as to who he wants to put where. Canadiens leading it by a score of 4-2, to two, and while they go over to the penalty box to get this taken care of. We'll go back to Jack. All right, Gary, suddenly we have a game up in Calgary. Jean-Francois Catin setting up Hubie McDonough. That's McDonough's little tip. Two goals in two minutes. It's three to two. Now back to Gary trying to figure out all the paperwork. doing what where he had moved off to one side Pierre Shampoo and Gerard Gauthier the linesman were up against the boards on the other end they're going to fill the box up well you can only wa watch one title bout at a time and Koharski's watching one and of course the linesmen are watching others everyone paired off and everyone got their shots in I have a feeling it's going to wind up all even we'll wait and see oftentimes in altercations like this the best call is a non-call by that I mean you don't penalize either team both teams are guilty, so you just even it out, and you get on with the rest of the game. Adet uh, then Gilbert, and then after that, it was absolutely everybody. Just underway here in the second period. We want to remind you, ESPN's National Hockey Night will continue in Madison Square Garden. And Mario Lemieux and the Pittsburgh Penguins, we know the Pens will be there. He might be there as well. We'll have it for you. Pittsburgh and the Rangers Friday night, 7.30 Eastern, 4.30 Pacific. We said Lemieux's treatments end on Tuesday. He wants to get back as soon as he can once that's over. That could very well be this coming week. Pittsburgh had a tie today, picking up a point. Washington lost today in overtime. The Devils had a win. The Rangers are still playing. The New York Islanders picked up a victory over Philadelphia. What a race in the Patrick Division. A couple of weeks ago, I thought Philadelphia was right out of it, but they put together a couple of wins, and it's a long shot, but they do have a chance at that fourth and final playoff position. When you look at the divisions, you know, you think that Pittsburgh with Mario is a shoe-in to come out of the Patrick division. It won't be easy, but they're a very strong, dominant team. You go out to the Smythe division, Vancouver looks like Calgary would be their toughest opponent, but they have a big, strong team that can score goals, excellent goaltending. You would think that Vancouver would emerge. You get to the Norris and the Adams, it's a dogfight. I could not pick one out of the top four teams in either division that I would put my money on. It's going to be very difficult for the Sabres, Canadian, the Quebec Nordique, and the Boston Bruins to decide a winner, and also those four teams in the Norse division. Home well, ice will matter very much, and that's why the final weeks of the regular season are vitally important. Still have not had the announcement on the penalties, what we just had. Coming up, though, we're going to add to these numbers. Look at the even strength. That's all the even strength. Buffalo Sabres power play time, the one-man advantage, and the two-man advantage. They have scored two power play goals, and Pat LaFontaine has both of those. For the Montreal Canadiens, here's a breakdown on the minutes. As far as they're concerned, you see the even strength time, their power play time. A one-man advantage, 7.06, and a two-man advantage for a minute 54. And they have scored two power play goals in this game. Picked up by Brian Bellows, who has the hat trick in the game. Bellows scored the first one. LaFontaine tied it. The Bellows made it 2-1. Dion made it 3-1. LaFontaine got his 41st to make it a one-goal game. And Bellows got the hat trick as 29th at 17-16 of the first 4-2. We're still sorting out the penalties. I'm still turning the pages, Jack Edwards. <laughs> All right, Gary. Bar she blows. Quebec was up 3-0 on Hartford, but here comes Jeff Sanderson. Stefan Fusset totally deep. The backhand scores, and guess what? It is 3-3 at Le Colise. Let's go back to the foreman, Gary. And Don Koharski is wondering, why couldn't I have had just a quiet afternoon game? Or <laughs> He has got to do a lot of work before this game is over tonight. 
The Montreal Canadiens and Buffalo Sabres getting a very long break here as they wait for the announcement on the calls. We've already lost one player in this game in the first period. Gord Donnelly picked up an instigator call on a fight, so he was thrown out of the game. So the Buffalo Sabres are already shy one. The Canadiens fans here want him to get it going and want to pick the pace up, which they have not been able to do yet. Alexander McGillney, who we've talked about a lot, of all the things I was asked tonight getting ready for the game, People kept asking me, how much is he getting paid for the goals he's scoring? He has an interesting contract. Alexander McGillney is becoming a richer and richer man with every goal. $600,000 for the base salary McGillney has. Then between 36 and 45, Alexander McGillney is going to be paid $5,000 per goal. For everything that goes over the 45 goal mark, he's getting $20,000. 10,000 this year for goal and 10,000 next year's for goal. That's great. I mean, that's a ton of money, and, and God bless him. I'm glad he's getting it. McGillney, LaFontaine, we know they're the offense of the Sabres. But if these two teams meet in the playoffs, I think the Habs have a distinct advantage. The Habs have their scoring spread out over more people. The Habs have 12 guys right now with 10 or more goals. The Sabres only have 8. The Habs have 10 guys with 30 or more points. The Sabres only 6. So if you're in the playoffs and you're coaching against the Sabres and you shut McGillney and LaFontaine down, Buffalo has a very, very difficult time to win. And you can see McGillney and LaFontaine, 103 goals, 38% of the Sabres' total goals. They need production from the other lines, or they'll find it very difficult to advance the playoffs this year. And that's what they have been looking for. They're also missing Peter Swoboda, who came from the Montreal Canadiens to Buffalo, an outstanding offensive defenseman. John Muckler says he is a huge loss and injury has put him out for the rest of this season. So they're not going to get Swoboda back and they haven't been able to cut a deal yet to fill his position. The announcement is taking as long as it did to sort it out. And uh, right now the Canadiens up on the board are going to be shorthanded by two men again according to what they've got on the board. They've got a double, double minor penalty up against Gilbert Dion who certainly earned it and another against J.J. Daniel, and nothing up for Buffalo. So if that's the way it stays, we're going to have another two-man advantage coming, Jack Edwards. All right, Gary, blown three-goal lead seems to be the theme of the night because Calgary was up 3-0 against San Jose, but John Carter lights the lamp, and what do you know, the Sharks are back in it. They tied it 3-3 there in the second period at the Olympic Saddle Dome. Gary? All right, it is a two-man advantage again for the Buffalo Sabres, trailing 4-2. McGillney in the shot, wow, the save! Kirk Muller clears it out. Did you see Desjardins play that? He gave the shooter solely to Waugh. That is great confidence in your goaltender. He made sure McGillney could not make the cross-ice pass. It's a one-on-one -on -one McGillney Waugh. Waugh won that one. LaFontaine to McGillney. McGillney back to Howarchuk. Ledyard. Ledyard back to Howarchuk. Two-man advantage for Buffalo again. Shot and a save by Waugh. Shot and a save McGillney. Shot and a save Tweeney. Patrick Waugh. How quickly he gets square to the shooter, how quickly he gets square to the rebound. They get two whacks at it, and he covers the puck up. Wad doing everything that's expected of him as a Montreal goaltender. We talk about their great defensive teams here in the Pat Burns area. One of the big reasons, probably the biggest reason, is the play of Patrick Roy. He does it time after time, game after game, and he stays right with it and smothers that one to keep the Sabres off the board on this power play to this point. Now this is not only a two-man advantage. There's a double minor on the board that was picked up by Dion along with the J.J. Daniel two-minute minor. So this is a, it's a long two-man advantage and a long power play change. 16.41 to go, second period. Canadians are leading at 4-2. They are being outshot now by Buffalo, 17-16. Mike Keane and LaFontaine on the draw. Pat LaFontaine wanted to Ledger to Howard, Chuck to Ledger. Alexander McGillney, Sweeney's in front of the net. LaFontaine, Wah blocked the pass. LaFontaine was sneaking in on the weak side. Sweeney over to Howard Chuck. LaFontaine. He and McGillney just go back and forth. Wherever the puck is, the person on the far side goes to that offside post and waits for the pass. Down low, LaFontaine again. LaFontaine.
Chastain all the way around does the 360. Power chuck shot deflected off Mike Keen. Kirk Muller tips it away from LaFontaine. Sweeney moved in. LaFontaine trying to hit McGillney. One off Desjardins. Ledyard picking it up. Alexander McGillney leading the league with 62 goals. Lost it on the pass. And Mike Keen is able to clear it out. Keen and Muller doing an excellent job in the Sabre point. And Desjardins stopping any cross-ice passes from LaFontaine to McGillney. Ledyard back to Sweeney. Howard Chuck stays back at the blue line. Howard Chuck. Tipped out by McGillney as he was trying to set him on the post. Still 23 seconds on the first two-minute minor for two Canadians. As knowledgeable a hockey crowd as you'll find anywhere, this is the Forum in Montreal. ESPN's National Hockey Night, and what a game we've had. We aren't even halfway through it yet. There you see the shots on goal. The power play continues. The Buffalo Sabres have 23 seconds left on the two-man advantage. LaFontaine dropped it back to Ledger. We'll get you updated on all those penalties. We'll tell you Lyle Odeline has been thrown out of the game. Odeline, among those who picked up penalties, got an instigator of fighting in the game. Hannon, two for fighting. Carney, five for fighting. Hannon, two for roughing. Audette, two for roughing. Wah! Plays it out of the zone. Bodger, two for roughing. Then Autoline of Montreal got the gamer with the two-minute instigator. Dion, the double minor for roughing. J.J. Daniel, two for roughing. Wah, two for roughing. Ronan, two for roughing. He'll be tested as soon as this game is complete. Rolls wide of the net. Uh, Daniel could not get it out. LaFontaine was here, got driven off the puck and cleared out of the zone. Jacques Demers made a good adjustment. In the first period, the Sabres had a five on three. He had two defensemen and a forward. This time, he had one defenseman and two forwards both times. He did an exceptional job of killing that penalty. Now it's a five on four power play. Shot from the point, LaFontaine, wow, the save, it deflected. Good play as J.J. Daniel, his defenseman, had hit off his skate and wow, found it. Still a minute 17 on the power play, Jack. All right, Gary, in Quebec, a big surprise. Pat Verbeek trying to wrap it around. The puck comes loose. Jeff Sanderson scores his 31st of the year, his second of the night. And from 3-0 down, the Whalers now lead 4-3. Gary? Well, that would be an upset if you take a look at the standings because you're talking about what probably is going to be the most improved team in the National Hockey League if Quebec continues at the current pace. Patrick Waugh doing what he's been doing all night long, making the initial save and smothering the rebound so the Sabres don't get a second crack at it. Waugh has won all three games against Montreal this season. He is 19-11-4, lifetime against the Buffalo Sabres. Patrick Waugh, of course, one of the outstanding goaltenders already in NHL history, 220 wins. 120 losses and 48 ties. Bodger had it to play. Mike Keane. Bodger and LaFontaine. Muller joins the crowd. A minute eight left on the power play. And cleared out of the zone again. Kevin Haller was there to clear. Two on two situation. The Sabres have the man advantage. They've got to get their third guy over there to come up with that loose puck. There's no sense waving and hoping someone's going to get it and feed you in the open. Outnumber your opponents. You have the extra man. Alexander McGillney for the Sabres. 50 on the power play. McGillney. Bad pass. Mike Keane sends it out. Kirk Muller was trying to break LaFontaine. Tied him up. Played it behind the net by Grant Fuhr. Schmelich goes back to get it for the Buffalo Sabres. 4-2. Canadiens 35 on this power play. McGillney. LaFontaine and he crisscrossed. McGillney looking. LaFontaine was covered down low. Schmelich over to Bodger. Bodger. Himalev. LaFontaine and McGillney down low. That's LaFontaine. Patty dropped it. Cleared by Lehman, Brisebois had the intercept. The cross-ice pass not working. McGillney tried to move into the heart of the box. The Habs closed the box a little bit and shut that lane down as well. Schmelik sends it in for the second time tonight. There is no scoring by Buffalo on a two-man advantage, and the whole thing's over. Even strength as the Canadian fans respond to Montreal's penalty killing. They got it done. Shot in on Fjord by Belanger. Played behind the net by Hannon. Hannon up to McGillney. So we're back to even strength. Five on five. Canadians have preserved their two-goal lead. Set in by Schmelich. Patrick Waugh thought about stopping it. Desjardins came back to help out Hannon. Hannon centered. Fanned on point. Ledyard save by Waugh. And cleared out by Ronan. Ledyard at the far end. Pushes it by. Belanger. 
J. Both teams now trying to get some people out who haven't played a lot because the people have been using and played the whole game. Their first six forwards and four defensemen both ways. Held in, Hannon in the corner, hit by Hill. Pucks underneath him, comes free behind the net. Desjardins moved in and tipped it away. It'll just be run up and out of the zone. And in the end, Jesse Balanchet got it out. Collision at center, Hill and Ledger. Ledger came away with it. Ledger will dump it in. Why? For the first time tonight, the game almost settles down to a pace. We haven't had that. Ronan sends it in. Grant Fuhrer going back to get it. 1917, the shots in favor of the Sabres. And it's the Canadians who are up by two. Raised pass, knocked down by DiPietro. Intercepted, sent right back in by Schmeller. And Fregois dropped it off. And you could not handle it. Sent around to Breeze Bois on the near side. Patrice, Breeze Bois. Banged out of the zone. Nope, Sweeney able to hold it in, but not for long. Robert gets it up ice. DiPietro going back to get it. The hit from Bodger looking for Ewan in front of the net. Pass blocked by Sutton and a penalty coming up in front as Ewan's going at it with Howard Chuck. Howard Chuck took a stick to the mouth, but I think the penalty's going to be on Howard Chuck. We'll find out when we come back. Well, we're going to get matching minors picked up here as Sweeney and Ewan, who are going at it in front of the net, will go to the penalty box. And they'll have matching two-minute minors. The sheet gets longer on the penalty side. This is our first look at a four-on-four. Four. We've had everything else. Five-on-three, five-on-four. See if it lasts for very long. <laughs> Kevin Haller, four-on-four four right now. He cleared it around the boards. Desjardins held it in. Fjord, trouble in front. Puck rolls free. Desjardins backs it in. All alone. Shot saved by Fjord. Brian Bellows after his fourth goal of the game. All alone with Grant Fjord. And Fjord made the save. Good play by Fjord. Desjardins the center. Dampus out with the Bellows. Desjardins cleared around near side. Bellows. Bellows dropped it, shot Fuhr, the save again on Dampus. And cleared out of the zone. That's just bad coverage by the Sabres. Four on four, you get a man, you mark him, you stay with him. You can't just let the Canadians free wheel in your zone the way the Sabres are. MLF's got it behind the net. Patrick Waugh looking, trying to find the puck. Gets some help from Dampus. Held in by Howard Chuck. Four on four still. Howard Chuck drops it. Himalev shot. Deflected. Off. Behind and out. On Patrick Waugh. Center on shot. Waugh the save. But it came outside the zone as Howard Chuck wound up. That puck went everywhere but in. Bring up to date our Budweiser scoreboard. Hartford still has a lead against Quebec in Quebec. Rangers, big game for them against Edmonton. Tied at the end of two in Calgary. Minnesota, St. Louis battling for a playoff spot. They're running out of time later tonight. That's our Budweiser scoreboard. Eric Desjardins having himself a tremendous game for the Canadians tonight. Feeds the puck beside the net. There's Don Poos, and Bells is coming in. And Fuhr clears it out of trouble. Desjardins gets it back, and there's Bellows one-on-one. Fuhr stands his ground and makes a very important save for the Buffalo Sabres. Bellows has had two four-goal games in his career. He already has picked up the Fuhr hat trick in this one, coming in that first period. And Eddie ends back. Muller winds up and takes it. Missed it on the short side on Fuhr, and it ricochets off the glass and into the seats. Gary, I am very impressed with the play of the Canadian defensemen. They have had a sound game in their own end of the rink. They've done an excellent job killing penalties, moving men from in front of their goaltender, and they've joined the rush extremely well. They've been in a lot of offensive plays. And when you consider that outside of Daniel, who's 27, the rest are 24 or younger, this is a defense that, that the league is going to have to reckon with for years to come. They aren't finished improving. They're going to get better and better as this season progresses throughout the playoffs and the next couple of years before they reach their peak. Well, they're still missing probably their best. Matthew Snyder, who is not playing out with the injury, is only 23 years old. A great future they have in front of them. McGillney on the intercept, drops at LaFontaine to McGillney. Wow, knocked it away. The Canadians popped it up on the blue line, but the Sabres were unable to convert. They jumped on it. Kirk Muller coming ahead, still four on four. Muller by Ledger, tried to run it back in. Had it deflected away by Keith Carney, who dove in. Ledger to center, McGillney. Knocked away from him, Breeze Bois. Mike Keane picks it up. Two minutes left, two seconds left on those matching liners. Dropped off for Muller again. Muller a little room, shot. Blocker saved.
misses and great saves by both goaltenders. That LaFontaine having himself just one magnificent year. He's going to set all kinds of records on a pace for 153 points, which would be a new scoring record as Perot currently holds it at 113. The Buffalo so he's going to beat that by a country mile. He's also probably going to beat Howard Chuck's assist mark. Howard Chuck had 75 assists, a Buffalo record last year. Pat LaFontaine is on a pace right now for 99 assists and 153 points, adding two goals in tonight's game. Face off to the point. Daniel's shot blocked out deep. Rebound on Dent just left it off. Dent will get it back on the near side. Dent running it down low. Taking away DiPietro. DiPietro turning with Ewan. 2-1-3 though. DiPietro, great pass. Todd Ewan. Ewan shot saved by Fjord. What a beautiful pass to Todd Ewan. DiPietro does a wonderful job coming back. He back checks all the way. Strips the Sabres of the puck. Then leads the rush. It's a two on three. He makes it a breakaway for Todd Ewan. He comes in a pretty good move, but he can't get the puck high enough as Kirst stays with him, goes down, and it's shot into Grant's chest. Deep Yetro, what a great play defensively and offensively to set Ewan in on that breakaway. Deep Pietro playing in the Ontario Hockey League at Sudbury for four seasons, then with Fredericton of the AHL. Prior to this year, had only 33 games in the National Hockey League, and Deep Pietro probably wouldn't be playing very much, but for the injuries of the Canadians. Give a guy a chance, and you never know how he's going to excel, and this guy has made, that's about the third great play he's made tonight, so he's, he's making his presence felt. Who knows, when the guys come back, he might be a fellow that keeps the job. He's only 22 years old, too. That's how deep this organization continues to be. Brought up by Howard Chuck. Howard Chuck the shot. Wide of Patrick Waugh. Sutton on the far side. Ewan knocked it away from him behind the net. Howard Chuck has it. Howard Chuck avoiding Ewan. Centers Hannon. Hannon back to the point. Bodger shot. Briston wide. Knocked down in front of the net. Presley that time. There to Ewan. Ewan's got DiPietro with him. Trying to return the favor on the pass. Can't Hannon knocked it away to Presley. Presley up to Howard Chuck. Canadians up 4-2. 8.05 to go. Second period. Hannon moving in. Centered for Howard Chuck. Lost it. Puck comes free. One on one. Two on one. The other way. Roberge. Roberge with DiPietro. Drops it. DiPietro. Blocked by Grant Ledyard. And he keeps the puck underneath him. Great play by Ledyard. A courageous block. And that could have been an excellent scoring chance for the Montreal Canadiens. 7.53 to go. Second period at the bar of ESPN. National Hockey. Pat LaFontaine wins the faceoff. Buffalo Sabres down by two, but lots of time left in this wide open hockey game. Himalev brings it in. Himalev. Shot. Save. Wah. Rebound. Muller kicked it away to the far side boards. Alexander McGillney turned it in. Off Mike Keane to center. Played by Ledger. Ledger dumps it right back into the zone. A furious pace by two teams. Both of them have team speed. LaFontaine from behind on the check. Muller got it back. Keen. Poke checked away from him by Ledger. Muller knocked it again up front. Muller's got it on side. Nope. LeClaire couldn't reach it. LeClaire held it to Muller in the corner to Keen. Keen kicked at LaFontaine. Down they go. Puck still free. LaFontaine hauls it in. LeClaire trying to dig it out. So is Keen. LaFontaine just pulls it back in. Fans wanted a delay call, but they won't get it there. Jack Edwards. All right, as you said earlier, Gary, a really important one for the Rangers. They enter the night one point behind New Jersey in the race for third in the Patrick Division. At Edmonton, Mark Messier feeds Tony Amati his 26th of the season in his 1-0 Rangers through two periods. Back to Gary at the Forum. And Edmonton trying to fight for a playoff spot as well, but for the New York Rangers with the games that have already been finished with the Devils winning, you see their position at New Jersey, Rangers and Islanders very much in a battle with four of those teams going to the playoff. We'll follow those New York Rangers home, and it may be Mario Lemieux on the ice again. The Pittsburgh Penguins and the New York Rangers. 7.30 Eastern next Friday night, ESPN's National Hockey Night from the guard. Saved by Sutton in behind the net. 6.50 left to go in this second period. Shots are up to 27-21 now in favor of the Canadiens. Wow, watching that screamer go wide by Donald Laudette. Jimmy said earlier, Odette's trying to make a point tonight with his coach, his teammates, and everybody else that he wants to be on this team. Play back in. Down boost, centering, fellow shot, score! He's got four goals tonight! The Habs getting all back in the defensive zone to shut the Sabres down and then very quickly on the transition they attack the Buffalo goaltender 
the skate. Kerr's got to make that save, Gary. He's got to make that save. Velos now has scored five goals and has four assists, nine points in five games against Buffalo this season. Brian Velos, standing ovation. Third time in his career he has had a four-goal game. The last one was against Chicago. Hannon. What a night for Brian Bellows. Hannon kicking at it. Controlled by Presley. Presley bringing it in for the Sabres, who are now down by three to a Canadiens team that can shut you down when they've got a lead offside on Montreal. Well, four marks to Serge Savard. They wanted offensive producers. The offseason, he went out and got Bells, Dompus. to the only Canadians that have hat tricks this year. Dompus with two, Bells with one. And here he is again. What a night for Brian Bellows. And then they pick up Lehman, a former 50-goal scorer, and he looks like he's found new life and a happy home here in Montreal. They are definitely a team to be reckoned with come playoff time. Bellows had 30 goals last season. He now has 31 this year. First year with the Canadiens after 10 years in Minnesota. The 28-year-old has put on a show here tonight. Haller sends it in. 5-2 Montreal. Grant Fuhr has been hit up by the Canadiens and he's back to that game. Six last night and already five tonight. Ledyard putting the hit on LeClaire. Ledyard kicks it away to McGillney in the corner. McGillney just bangs it off the near side dasher. Played by Kirk Muller in the zone. And this is where the Canadians also separate themselves from some other teams. You think they're done. They're just feeling, feeling their oats. They know where the juggler is, and once they think they've got a hold of it, they don't let up. Mike Keane moving in. Keane centering shot, score! Six 
do. Let's go back to our studios. All right, Gary, a stunning turnaround at Calgary. 16 seconds into the third period. John Carter from about 75 feet. Jeff Reese thinks he has it. No, he gets through 4-3 San Jose after they were down 3-0. Gary? Teams with a lot to prove, like Ottawa San Jose, play it tough without a lot to show for it. Here with 4-0-1 to go in the second period, the Montreal Canadiens. That incredible turnaround offensively. This team averaging 4.09 goals a game. It's going to go up. The sixth best offense in the league. Tied for fourth on defense in goals against. Against the Buffalo team, which is number one in offense, but which is being shut down right now after a couple of early goals as LaFontaine had tied the game up in the first period, then picked up their second goal also in the first period off power plays, and since then it has been all Montreal. And down behind the net, they will get a whistle here. With 3.55 left to go in the second period from the Forum, which is a fire because it's 6-2 Canadiens. Montreal adding two goals in the second period. Bellows at 13.28, Damfus and Hill. Mullers, 31st at 14.35. Mike Keane had the assist on it. The 6-2 lead with 3.50 to go here in this second period. That'll give some of the Canadian players a bit on the bench. A little more ice time here. Dion lost it to Bodger. Muller got it back to him. Dion, Muller, and LeClaire on this line now. Muller drops it off again. Kirk Muller. Muller waiting for the setup in front. Nine seconds left in the power play. Shot on Hill. Save Fewer. Rebound. just been given a penalty by Don Kaharski. After that goal, Fuhr looked at Kaharski, threw his arms up in the air with a stick. Kaharski wasted no time. What a great play by Muller. Good patience. He hangs on to the puck, hangs on to the puck. And again, the Canadians outnumber the Sabres in front of the Sabre net. And they're there to put the rebound past Grant Fuhr. Two Canadians, one Sabre defender. Results in a Montreal goal. 7-2, to two, and the Buffalo Sabres need to regroup. Watch Grant Fuhr after the goal. Saying, I'm sure, how come there weren't a lot of people in the crease that you didn't call that long color jersey's on? I don't know if he's upset with Don Gaharski or if he's just upset with himself. He has not had a good performance, especially by Grant Fuhr standards, but by any goaltending standards tonight, Fuhr has not had a sharp game. John Muckler's club, after losing last night at home, trying to make the point against the Canadiens, and they're losing it. They lost it last night, and they're losing it tonight, and maybe even more important. They've tried a skating game against the Canadians. They've tried shutting things down defensively. He felt his team had to play a tough physical game to find a way to beat the Canadians. That's not working. What do you do? This is probably the team you're going to face first round of the playoffs. I would love to be inside John Muckler's head right now to see what's going on. He has to be very concerned about his team. And discipline, I think most of all, you must maintain your discipline in this game. You intend to compete at it, and when you lose discipline, you're seeing what happens. The Canadiens are just pouring it on. Dion getting the goal. It came at 16.34 to give the Canadiens the 7-2 lead on sportsmanlike conduct. Same time on Fuhr. And right back on the power play go the Buffalo Sabres. The danger in a score like this from the Sabre point of view is that this game could get ugly if they don't get back into it with a goal or two to keep it close. They probably feel they have nothing to lose and they still have some heavyweights left in the bench. We'll wait and see what transpires. I think it would be a futile effort because the Canadians are not a team you're going to push around, especially here in the Montreal Forum. Goharski's trying to get Buffalo to send somebody over to serve this penalty. May is in the penalty box and is now coming out. He was in there for his own penalty. And they weren't going to leave him, so they bring Himalev over to serve it. And this now is the, the play. power play. That's the play in front of Fuhr. There's Dion coming in, and he gets tangled up with Fuhr. But Fuhr's stick actually pulled Dion's skate into the crease. I don't believe it was Dion that interfered with Fuhr. I think it was Fuhr who 
interfered with the on, and that's not easy to say. A power play again for the Montreal Canadiens. They already lead 7-2. Dropped off Depo center. Shot save made on Bellows, who almost had his fifth goal of the night. Bellows again looking. Lehman back to him. Trying to center Dampus. The Canadians want Bellows to shoot. They want him to score some more. There he is in the corner from Dampus. Centering Dampus. His pass. They're just passing now. Nobody wants the they want the goal. Shot wide. Lehman near side. Teamwork personified here now. Everybody wants everybody else to get points. McGillney goes around Bellows. Moving in on Hill. McGillney the shot blocked by Hill. He stands Bellows up and Kevin Haller comes back to get the puck. 59 left on the power play. Chance for the Canadiens. Haller in. Haller tried to drop it off. McGillney was there. Cleared it out. Picked up by Bob Sweeney. Sweeney moving in. Hope checked away from him by Brisebois. Lehman gets hauled out. Boharski will let the call go since the Sabres are already shorthanded. Center ice, Kirk Muller back out. Over to Brisebois. Patrice Brisebois down the middle. LeClaire backed it up intended from Muller who tipped it in on goal. Muller took it right off the Buffalo defenseman's stick and tipped it in on Grant Fjord. 27 left on the Canadiens power play. And our storyline here tonight, Montreal Canadiens, Bellows, third time in his career, a four-goal game and may not be done. League's leading scorer, Pat LaFontaine, now has 41, 89 total penalty minutes. Five of nine on power plays here tonight. Five of the nine goals have come on power plays, and no wonder. On that last goal, the assists of Dion's went to Hill and Muller. Bellows almost had his fifth goal as Fjord made a save on this power play chance for Montreal. The last Canadian to score four goals was Matt Naslin in 84, and the last with five, Yvonne Cornway way back in 1975. Now we're talking some names. Sent in around the boards, and an over to get it for the Sabres, couldn't. Muller along the point. Dejar and Dan, Brisebois, Muller. Muller takes it. Hannon blocked it. Eight seconds left on the power play. LeClaire blocking the runaround. LeClaire looking in front for Muller. Goes to Kirk Muller. Power play is over. Back to even strength. Desjardins shot wide. Rebound just went by. Even strength here. LeClaire realizing it. Turns back to the board. Blocked by Bodger momentarily to Muller. It is even strength. LeClaire knocked down. Shot over the net. Canadians look like they're still on the power play even though they are not. Gilbert Dion had the chance. Save made and Fjord covers up with Dion moving in. Sweeney knocks him down from behind. Doug Bodger and LeClaire mixing it up. LeClaire says enough of this and he just tosses Bodger down. The Canadians look almost invincible here in the second period. They're winning every battle along the boards, in the corners. They're strong in front of the net. They're back in their zone before the Sabres can attack. They're countering quick. A terrific, terrific period by the Montreal Canadiens and a frustrated Grant Fuhr in net will be looking to make some of the Canadians pay the price for standing in front of his net. There's Dion, where you want him to be. And Fuhr will be smacking and smacking. Boom, there's a two-hander. Could easily be called as a penalty. Kaharski probably feels the Sabres have been in the penalty box enough tonight. I'm going to let that one go. And Fuhr is still jawing with Kaharski right now. Kaharski saying, get away and go stop the puck. I'm not here to talk to you. I'm here to officiate. And you're here to prevent the Canadians from scoring goals. Montreal 3 of 7 on the power play. Buffalo's 2 for 8. The Canadians leading 7-2. A minute 4 left to go in the second period. Face off one to the point. J.J. Daniel shot. Deflected in the corner off Hill. D. Pietro's played a strong game. He dumps it back behind the net. Tried to center Todd Ewan out in front. And Himalev moves up and gets it out. One under a minute now to go in this period. Himalev in. Himalev. Daniel was there with him. Near side. Hill can't touch it up. He'll come back and pick it up along the boards. Pushes it up to the blue line. And we come two on two the other way. Robert. Bear drops it for Daniel, and Daniel just dumps it wide of Grant Fuhr. Ledyard picking it up. Number one team in the National Hockey League, the Montreal Canadiens. The most goals scored against them this season, eight. By who? Buffalo. Score here, 
7-2, Canadiens. Ledger wound up, took too long. Presley back to it. Ledger can't, just can't get a stick on it. Poked away by Belanger. Ewan coming. Ewan, Roberge with him. Roberge, shot saved by Fjord. Grant Fjord denying that eighth goal for the moment. Ten under ten left to go in the period, and that's the end of two. Todd Ewan, who is a heavyweight for the Canadians, making some nifty passes in tonight's game. Di Pietro, with limited ice time, has made his presence felt each and every time on the ice. Here are the two sluggers for the Canadians, but they can play hockey. A great pass and a good shot. Pass from Ewan, shot from Auberge. And boy, the Canadians dominated the Sabres once again. A tremendous second period, and the Canadians lead it 7-2. Jack? All right, Gary, thanks very much. As Bill Clement said before tonight's game, the Canadians are a happy bunch of hockey players, and they're certainly playing that way tonight. Some stunning turnarounds in the NHL this evening. Let's begin in Quebec, where the Hartford Whalers fell behind the Nordiques by a 3-0 score. But they did not give up. Jeff Sanderson from the slot rips it through, and yes, the Whalers come all the way back and win it 5-3. The uh, Nordiques... Uh, had fallen away, uh, are uh, now in second place in the uh, Adams division, uh, seven points behind Montreal, six ahead of Boston. The Rangers and the Oilers, it was 0-0 through the first period, and in the second, Ed Olchick with some good work, and then Mark Messier in front to Tony Amante, he pulls the trigger, and they are now in the third period, 1-0, the Broadway's up in that one. Edmonton, eight points behind Winnipeg for the uh, fourth and final playoff spot in the Smythe division. The Sharks in the Flames. It was 3-0 Calgary. Then it comes back to a 4-3 lead for San Jose. Robert Reichel around and around and around he goes. And where he stops, only Brett Ashton knows. His second of the night. Calgary four points behind Vancouver for first place in the Smythe going into tonight's action. Minnesota against St. Louis. It was 1-0 North Stars after the first period. And in the second, Brett Hull connects. And it's 2-1 for the Blues. Minnesota leads St. Louis by seven points for fourth place in the Norris Division. Coming up, Mr. Morganti. Al's in the corner and so is Pat Verbeek. There may be some interest in Verbeek as we head toward the playoffs. Stick around. ESPN's National Hockey Night continues up in Montreal. It's the Canadiens up 7-2 on Buffalo. National Hockey Night is presented by the New Dodge, a division of the Chrysler Corporation. Well, through two periods up at the Forum, it is Montreal 7 and Buffalo 2. I'm Jack Edwards. In the middle is Bill Clement and Al's in the corner. And last week you told us that there wouldn't be any hockey dream team and they have announced that that's true. There won't be any NHL stars playing for the United States and Canada and other countries in the Olympics. And this week? No, there won't. There will be a 98, however. But this week, you'll be hearing this week officially that the expansion team comes in. Those Ducks in Anaheim will come in and the Miami team will come into the league. And you're going to also hear there's no stopping it. The Minnesota North Stars are going to go south. I don't know if they're going to come to Lone Stars or whatever, but they're headed for Texas. In matters with teams that are staying put, Wayne Gretzky got a lot of flack for his slow start, but he's answering the critics, took off that flak jack to protect the bad back. Ten points in a five-game road trip. The Kings are looking pretty good now because the Winnipeg Jets have really hit some turbulence. Jam Nob, Alexei Jam Nob has been out three weeks, going to be out another three with a bad back. Teppo Newman and out six. They're in trouble. They are going to have some trouble keeping in the playoff race because they need that defenseman Newman and very underrated. Now, team's not going to the playoffs. This is Kevin Deneen. He could get a lot of interest by teams that are going to the playoffs because the Flyers need some help in the future. Pat Verbeek, he's hot. Teams are going to be looking at him. But the guy that I think is going to get the most interest, this guy on the Hartford Whalers, Murray Craven. He's a very good player. He's a universal player. He can play a lot of positions. I think the Pittsburgh Penguins are going to be looking at Craven to maybe fill in on a point on a power play because he can play power play, penalty kill. The Calgary Flames may have interest to fill in for Gary Roberts. He'll be moved. Other guys from weak teams that, that the good team's going to be looking at now, guys like Adam Creighton from Tampa, Norm McGyver from Ottawa, maybe Kelly Kissio from San Jose. Before the end of this three-week period, you're going to see some movement. All right, Al, so those are players that might be uh, making transitions. Yes. 
going to teams and trades, but how about players that are making transitions coming off the injured list and perhaps helping their teams that way, Bill? I think there are three teams right now in the NHL that have to get one of their players back uh, in order to do anything in the playoffs. They can get to the playoffs without them, but once the playoffs start, they need them. Obviously, Pittsburgh with Mario Lemieux, and it looks like they're going to get him back uh, in a short period of time. I thought Pittsburgh could win it without Mario Lemieux until a couple of weeks ago, but they have proven to me and just about everybody else that they are, in fact, mortal. Al men mentioned Gary Roberts. They may try to trade to replace Gary Roberts, but they need him back. Uh, a leg operation. He will not be back until perhaps the second round of the playoffs. If they, if they can get by the first round, they'll be okay. He was their leading scorer, their leading point total guy, and also their leading penalty minute guy, so he was a tough guy as well. Rangers need Brian Leach back. I mean, no two ways about it. The Norris Trophy winner, uh, Brian Leach, can do it all for them. And the good news for the Rangers is he is expected back sometime mid to the end of the month of March, so he'll be able to get it into full gear by the time the playoffs start. But those three teams need those three players. Yeah, those last two teams of which you spoke, the Rangers and Calgary, uh, playing last night to a 4-4 tie, and the Rangers up 1-0 in the third period. Montreal leads Buffalo 7-2 through 2. And when ESPN's National Hockey Night continues... The Plays of the Week, and some real beauties for you. Welcome back to ESPN's National Hockey Night. Our game, it's Buffalo at Montreal, and the Sabres are taking it on the chin. It's 7-2 in the second intermission. Any excuse we can find to get Tina Turner into Plays of the Week is a valid one, so here we go. They give awards to hits at the Grammys, and we've got some award-winning hits on the Plays of the Week. Pavel Bure getting tagged by Keith Kachuk. That was in Vancouver. The two teams play again in Winnipeg, and hello again. Some ups and some downs. Ulf Samuelson knocking Claude Lemieux down the conventional way. Now Steve Duchesne going up and over Scott Stevens. Joseph Baranek gets the view of the entire arena. There's the ceiling. There's the ice. Billy Guerin dumping him there. Goalkeeping highlights. Billy Smith's number retired. Everybody hack each other across the ankles to commemorate that. Career minor leaguer, 33-year-old Rick Kinnickle has waited long enough to get into the NHL. Peter Sidorkovic left alone to defend against Mike Keane. Valerie Zelopukin in front. Stefan Fissette says, not this time. You're not going in the highway. Joe Mullen has Craig Billington. Not negative, nay, no, he won't get it. Two on O, oh, Eric Lindros and Mark Brecky, but the two on O oh becomes a two on no. The obligatory penalty shot of the week. Steve Malte going in on Ed Belford denied. Goal scoring, Cam Neely is back and he makes his impact known. Juno, right out for Wesley. Wesley, shot in, but loose. Neely scores! Cam Neely, power play goal! Two nothing Boston! Owen Nolan with some sweet stuff around Bruce Driver. Sweeter still around Chris Terreri. Peter Bondra, unbelievable individual work. Gets knocked down on the check. Pops the puck up, juggles it in the air, settles it, uses the screen, and rifles it home. But top honors go to Alexander McGilney, the first to 60 goals this season. Here's Dave Hannon from the top of the slot, firing it. Chevalier getting a piece of it. Well, Gilby reversing for the shot. National Hockey Night continues. Canadians up 7-2 on Buffalo through two periods. Good offense for the Habs, but the D looks pretty shiny, too. Not bad D, especially on the penalty killing. They've given up two goals. I still like what they're doing. If nothing else, they've kept Alexander McGillney off the board, and they really play an aggressive style when they're killing penalties. You can see their two forwards lined up out here next to, next to the two Buffalo point men, but what they're doing is they're protecting this seam. This is Bodger looking to McGillney, but not having enough room to get it through, so they have to go to the outside. Once again, it comes over to Himalev. What's he looking at? He wants to get it through this seam, but he can't because Gary Lehman has moved back in. So they keep Buffalo on the outside, and, and finally Himalev moves it into the corner. Watch this terrific play by Patrice Brisebois. See him moving up. Here's Brisebois. The reason he's moving up is he knows that, that there's only one place that the Buffalo player can go to. That's back to the point. Where the X is, there are no Buffalo players, so he can force the guy out. And that's what he did. They ended up breaking up the play. So it's one thing to be aggressive. It's another thing to be smart and aggressive. And Montreal does both of those. Yeah, and they're up 7-2 to through two periods. We're going to go back to the forum to Gary Thorne and Jim Schoenfeld for the play-by-play -play after this. National Hockey Night is brought to you by cold-filtered Miller Genuine Draft. Get out of the old, get into the cold. By the new Dodge, a division of the Chrysler Corporation. And by Visa, 
honored at over six million more places than American Express. Visa, it's everywhere you want to be. The Forum in Montreal. Gary Thorne, Jim Chantal, as we get set for the third period. And our Miller, genuine draft light scoring summary. Are uh, we ready? Bellows, 27-116, Danfus, Desjardins, Montreal up. Game gets tied up. LaFontaine got his 40th, Bodger and Himmel have 315. Bellows gets his 28th. Lehman and DiPietro on the power play. It came at 6, 48. Dion picking up his 14th. Belanger and Haller even strength. 13, 49. LaFontaine second of the game. 15, 55, 41 on the year for him. Sweeney got the assist. 17, 16. Bellows 29th. Lehman and Desjardins even strength first period. In the second period, Bellows got his 30th. Danfus and Hill even strength. 13, 28. Muller's 31st. Keene 14, 35. Even strength. 16, 34. Leclerc's 14th. Hill and Muller on the assist. 7-2, and that is our score. New goaltender in. They have pulled Grant Fuhr out of the game. Fuhr is up. Dominic Hasek is now in the net for the Buffalo Sabres. 31 shots against Grant Fuhr, 7 goals. And believe it or not, we're actually starting this period. Even strength 5-on-5. Five five. McGillney drops it in the middle. Desjardins turns it back to Haller. Kevin Haller's pass knocked down. Himalev's got it. Himalev moving back. So it's Patrick Waugh now and Dominic Hasek, the two goaltenders. Himalev moves to the red line, intercepted by Leclerc. Leclerc got knocked off the puck. Muller takes it back. Muller coming, three on two, drops a keen shot wide of Hasek. Rebound came all the way to center. Himalev drops it off. LaFontaine hanging back. Couldn't get the break. Patrick Waugh just holds it up. Waugh pushing it around with one arm, even on McGillney. Played by Mike Keane. Keane drops it to LeClaire. John LeClaire, his shot blocked by Sutton. Way back. Very important for the Sabres to play this period with a lot of intensity. Win or lose, they have to play this period hard so they can leave this building with some degree of respectability. They've shown everything they can at the Canadians. They've fallen short in every department, including the toughness department. But they have to finish this game strong so they'll have a little smidgen of something to build on going into their next game. From former country of Czechoslovakia, Dominic Hasek, 5'11", 168. You see the numbers that he's picked up this season. Not played much here since Grant Fuhr has come over. Fuhr has been playing regularly. He comes into this game 5-3-1 with the Buffalo Sabres. He was 13-9-4 at Toronto. So Hasek in net. Jim said, important now for Buffalo to regain some composure. Sutton whacked by that dump in. All right, as he gets up. I think it went off his helmet into the stand that was going right at his head. He dropped to his knees not to block it but to get out of the way and it grazed off of him over the glass and he's lucky it didn't catch him right in the face. Patrick Waugh looking for the victory in net. He's 16, 26, 16 and 5 on the season. And there is Waugh who had a tough start first half of the season. Very unusual, a little shaky. Gave up more goals than they are used to, but the trouble is Patrick Waugh's standards are so high, he said for himself. If he's not number one in goals against and save, everyone thinks something's wrong. Well, it was a team that had made a lot of personnel changes, including the man behind the bench. They were learning a new style, so the defensive zone coverage would be very different than the coverage he was used to. So it's understandable that as the team didn't do well, he wouldn't do as well. But right now, they are flying. Indeed they are. Sutton takes it back in his own end. Sutton lost it. Damfus. Damfus kicking it away. Penalty coming up on Bellows. Bellows leaned in on Audet. Cross-checked him from behind. And Don Koharski in this third period with a score 7-2 is not going to let very much go. That's a good call. That's a preventative call from the Sabre point of view. He knows the Sabres are watching and they're looking for anything to ignite their team. If he doesn't call that penalty, they may use it. That's a smart call by a veteran referee who usually does call a very good hockey game. Two for eight on the power play officially for Buffalo. The Canadians officially have been given the three for eight. Although we're not sure about the number of power play chances they really had in the first period. There's the replay, a little push. It wasn't really a vicious cross check, but I think a good call with the circumstances that have the head 7-2. Montreal trying to continue their win streak. They've won four in a row, eight, one and one in their last ten games. And they are shorthanded here. McGillney chasing into the corner with Hill. Hill, McGillney collide. Puck comes free. Sweeney moves over to get it for Buffalo. Couldn't. Wrapped around the net by J.J. Daniel. Held in. Howard 
Chuck shot blocked. Daniel got a piece of that, cleared out off Bodger. Howard Chuck's got to get it back on side, or his teammates have to get on side. He actually pushed that back in before they did so, until the offside is called. Just underway here in the third with Bellows out of there in the cross checking at 130. Our visa storyline. Bellows has got a chance for his first five goal game. He has four. Pat LaFontaine, the game's leading scorer, adding two goals tonight. Dion has also picked up two. Gilbert Dion having a strong night in Montreal has used the power play to the advantage, even though the Montreal Canadiens come into this game 19th on power play at home. Tonight, you would not know it. They have worked the puck extremely well. Their entire game has been sound tonight. If you hadn't seen the Canadians for a while and you wondered why they were in first place overall, tonight's game would answer any questions you had. They've had excellent penalty killing. They've been very strong five-on-five -five covers defensively. Their transitional game has been extremely quick, catching the Sabres flat-footed. And they've just pursued the Sabres at every turn of the ice, won all the physical battles, won all the speed battles, and by far been the better of the two teams. Doesn't leave much for Buffalo to claim, does no, it? No, he really doesn't. It's been a dreadful game for the Sabres and a big game for the Hatters. And a chance for back-to-back -back wins against Buffalo by the Canadiens. McGillney trying to drop it off. Did. Knocked down by Bodger and held in on the power play. LaFontaine going for the hat trick. Daniel trying to clear it out. Bob Sweeney had it hit the pads and stays in the zone. Sweeney back to Howarchuk. Howarchuk to Bodger to Howarchuk. Dumps it off LaFontaine. Shot it wide. Patty LaFontaine, a great one-timer. Just missed going for the wide side upstairs. McGillney back to Howarchuk. Bodger. Pat LaFontaine, and at three in the power play, deflected, Mike Keane blocked it in a 7-2 game. Bodger in, shot wide by Bodger on Wild LaFontaine, ran it in, deflected to Howard Chuck, shot off the end of the glove of Patrick Waugh, and in the seats. Let's check in with Jack Edwards. All right, Gary, a great one up in Calgary. Theron Fleury kicks it along with this skate, comes around the goal, looks as if he's going to go far side. He comes back to the near side after blowing a three-goal lead. The Flames lead 5-4 with four-tenths of a second to go. They're about to drop the puck and end it. Gary? Calgary Flames, it's been a struggle for them this season. Unlike any other team I can think of in the league this year, Calgary has had the highest of mountains and the lowest of valleys, and there's been virtually nothing in between. Well, a team like that, if they can hit the playoffs when they're on the climb up the mountain, they could be a dangerous hockey team. Timing is very important for the Calgary Flames. Calgary second to Vancouver starting the day. Only four points out of first place, though, in the Smythe division. Our check holds it in. Still a Buffalo power play. LaFontaine for the hat trick. Wah denies it. Puck free in the front of the slot. It'll be held in by LaFontaine. 30 left on the power play. Griezmann was helping out in front that time. Comes back to the middle. McGillney dumped it into the wide side corner. Back to LaFontaine. 22 on the power play. Bodger the shot. Tipped in front. LaFontaine hit the post. He had Patrick Waugh down to the far side. Hit the post with a rebound chance. McGillney. 10 on the power play. Tried to center. No dice. And cleared out of the zone. Eric Desjardins, and that'll do it. So the Sabres do not convert on the power play. They are now two for nine on the power play in this game. Hannon had it taken away. Dion for the trick. Saved by Dominic Hasek. And no rebound. Well, as the play was going up the ice, Sweeney was jawing again with a half defender. And again, we have to be concerned about this game turning a little ugly. I would hate to see another brawl break out. There's Hasek with his first save, and he smothers the rebound. He's watched for two periods. He knows. Don't leave any loose pucks around the crease because it's going to be a white jersey right there to pounce on it and put it past you. Gilbert Dion, 16 goals on the season, and two of those that he has added here tonight. Other scores, season finals, Rangers hanging on against Edmonton in their game. Calgary's got the victory over San Jose. Boy, St. Louis needs points. Toronto, Los Angeles just getting underway at the Forum. Comes back to J.J. Daniel. Daniel shot. Deflected in on goal by Dion and the save made by Hassan. Hannon goes down on the ice. Held in. Belanger. Belanger's had it blocked by Ledger. Ledger controls the puck and sends it around the boards. Even strength now. Himalev. Himalev just batted it and chases it down himself. Himalev up the boards. He got nailed. Belanger dumped Himalev in the corner. Schmelich. Hannon. Hannon had it poke checked away by Daniel. Hannon comes back to get it. Hannon moving it into Himalev. Himalev has a block trying to get back to him. Dion dumps it to center. Belanger leaves.
Leaves it on the point. Belanger heading to the net. Can't get there. And Ronan just spun it back to the point. Dave Hannon brings it up for the Buffalo Sabres. Trailing here. 7-2. to Audette back for Hannon. Hannon tied up by Ronan from behind to the point. Shot Keith Carney saved by Patrick Waugh. And Dion will just clear it out of there. This will be an icing call as Keith Carney goes back to touch it up. The Forum in Montreal, 15-20 left to go. Third period, Fuhr out after two. Canadians up. 17,959 packed house here at the Forum. Saturday night, ESPN's National Hockey Night, and of course, Hockey Night in Canada. And this is what we were worried about. There's the potential for lots of this to go on before this game is done. This Mario is a rematch. Roberge. A rematch from last night's game where the two of them squared off. Brad May of Buffalo and Roberge of Montreal. Brad May hurt his arm about 10 days ago. He hyperextended his elbow. In the fight last night, he re-injured it. And he's grabbing on with that left arm. This can't be good for it. I don't know why, if he was sent out by John Muckler, John Muckler would do it, or whether he did it on his own, he would do it. It's not productive. It's not doing anything to benefit his team to have a fight at this stage of the game and at this stage of the home-and-home -home series. And again, you see another aspect of the Montreal Canadiens. They can skate, they can fly, they score, they always have the defense. They've got Patrick Y in net, and if you want to play physical hockey against them, they've got guys like Robers ready to go. Oh, they sure can, and not only can they fight, these guys can skate and take the body well. There May and Robers, right in the middle of your screen. Matter the face off, Robert is trying to get out to the point in the last draw, May blocks him off, but May is looking to start something. He got his wish. They've got Ed Ronan, Mario Roberge, Todd Ewan. Sean Hill was not that big, but isn't afraid to go to the corners with people. I mean, they got plenty of physical support on this team. We got a big Shaq attack coming up here on ESPN. I think you're going to love it. It's behind the scenes with Shaq. <laughs> Outside the lines tomorrow at 8 o'clock Eastern, 5 Pacific. Shaq, sudden impact. ESPN, Bob Lee followed him around two weeks at home, at practices, on the road. Great chance to look at one of the real outstanding stories in sports right now. A superstar from day one, tomorrow night. Kirk Muller, Pat LaFontaine. Nope, Mike Keane is Pat LaFontaine. 5 for fighting. Picked up by both. Roberge and May. Sutton up to the point. McGillney couldn't get it. Bodger brings it to the Sabres to McGillney. McGillney with him up trailing. It's taken down. McGillney got dumped. And Indians cleared around for Keane. Keane, Muller. Muller with LeClaire. Muller, LeClaire comes to him. Muller, the shot. Save made by Hassett. Near side, McGillney. LeClaire moves in on him. Kurt Muller in the corner. Muller's picked up a goal tonight. LeClaire, Keane. Keane back for Muller. Muller, hook checked away by McGillney from LeClaire. McGillney, who's been head down, held down tonight as far as goals are concerned with none. LaFontaine, the only two for the Buffalo Sabres. And Alexander McGillney, who's the 14th player to score 60 goals in National Hockey League history, has got 62 right now. Well, because of injuries, he didn't make the 50 goals in 50 games, the 50-50 club, so he said, well, I'll score 60 goals in 60 games. And he's had a tremendous season for the Sabres, but he has been stopped at every turn in the ice tonight and, and virtually had not only a poor game offensively, but he's floated a little bit in the defensive end of the ring. McGillney's on a pace to go 86 or 87 goals. He miss, has missed seven games this season. First 99, Wayne Gretzky has the record. Goals in a season, 92. He only does have a shot at that. Played by nobody. Audette couldn't control it. Desjardins dropped it off. Audette picks it up. Donald Audette moving in. Desjardins fell down. Audette went back to get it, tried to center, and lost it. Todd Ewan clears it around. Keith Carney unable to hold it in. Waiting for his teammates to get on side as it hook checked away off the boards. Gary Lehman was breaking. Hasek, Hasek dropped it off. Schmelich's got it. Schmelich around Dan Foose. On dead at 
his own blue line. Odette Fanning on the pass. Stood up by Brian Bellows, who's after a big, big night here. He's had an enormous night. Four goals in this game. Here the other way. Ledyard picks it up. 13.43 left to go in the third period here at the Forum. He intercepted uh, Howard Chuck. Howard Chuck taken down by Ronan. Rolls in on Patrick Waugh. Drops it off for Breeze Bois behind the net. Patrice Breeze Bois couldn't get it out. Driven right back to him by May. In the shot right through the crease. Patrick Waugh was down. The puck went through on the tip by Wayne Presley. Great chance for Presley to get the third goal for Buffalo. Ledger behind his own net. Grant Ledger spun around near side Sutton. Sutton. Belanger moves in and puts the hit on it. They separate. Howard Chuck goes wide side. Will be sent in by Ray. Cleared around by Waugh again. Dion was there to tip it to the point. Howard Chuck, Belanger moved in on him again. Howard Chuck and Belanger do battle. Howard Chuck was able to hold it in, but Breeze Bois was back there to pick it up. Breeze Bois clearing it up ice. Canadians just don't want to turn it over now on their own end. They'll dump it up the other way. Ronan did that time. Dion, then they'll try and chase it down and get scoring chances. Dropped off to Ronan in the middle, intercepted by Presley. Presley comes to center, pushes it by Halle. Himalev could not handle it. Again, a two-on-two, -two and the Montreal Canadiens have the third guy back. The four throws the hit on the Sabres. They're beating them all over the ice cap. Just playing the perfect game here tonight. Ronan gets it in, slashed from behind by Himalev, who takes the puck down in the corner. These two teams are going to meet a couple more times before this season is over. Alexander McGillney drops it off Himalev, but LaFontaine was in on the near side offside. 12.09 to go in the third. Let's check in with Jack. All right, Gary, Toronto and the Kings are underway. Rob Pearson down the right wing, winds and drives. Dave McElwain's on the far side. He tips it in. Toronto's up 1-0 at that other forum. Let's go back to the original and Gary. Generating a lot of interest in the National Hockey League, and particularly around Canada. Toronto has always been a very popular team throughout this country and this season they have turned it around as Pat Burns has his team in third place in the Norris Division and maybe heading back to the playoffs. Behind the net played by J.J. Daniel. Daniel hit by Himalev got it up McGillney in center. McGillney drops it off Bodger. Bodger back over to LaFontaine. Pat LaFontaine moving it in. Turned by Daniel. Sends it in for Himalev. Himalev just knocked it down in the corner. Desjardins was fighting with Himalev for it. McGillney gets knocked down by Muller. Kirk Muller's got some of the quickest feet in the National Hockey League. Shot, a uh, save, but an offside in any event. Offside will bring the faceoff outside the zone at the Forum. The Canadian 7, Buffalo 2. DiPietro will take the faceoff against Sweeney as the full house looks on here at the Forum. Or he was going to. He gets chased out of there, and Dion moves in. One by Sweeney anyway. Sutton sends it in on Patrick Waugh, who knocks it away. Buffalo Sabres have been unable since the first period to get anything by Waugh and the rest of this Canadiens team. As it's a 7-2 lead, all the scoring coming in the first two periods. Waugh again will glove that, drop it off to the side, banged at by Hill, and it ends up going up off the dasher and into the seats. And it's spinning around on the far side. Players themselves separating here as the heat goes down a little in this game. Well, Jacques Demers has to be very pleased with his club's performance tonight. The only coach to win back-to-back -back Jack Adams trophies is the coach of the year. And Gary, he would be the leading candidate in my book for the same honor this year. Yes, indeed. John Muckler, I don't think they're finished dealing yet. Jerry Meehan and John Muckler have made some pretty good trades. They brought some good offensive punch to this team. They need better play in their own end of the rink in front of their goaltender, and they need the scoring spread out more. You cannot rely on two players to carry the load that LaFontaine and McGillney have carried throughout the playoffs. It shows up when you end up playing a team with the talent of the uh, Canadiens. Shot on score! Donald Audet picks up the third Buffalo goal to make it 7-3. Well, I'm happy for Donald Audet. It was a lot of Right, uh, stuff written in the paper about young Donald Audet wanting to get out of Buffalo. You'll see him here, waste no time. He's going to take this pass, snaps a good wrister by Waugh. 
He's just a young guy that wants to play. He led the team last year in game-winning goals with six. And he felt he should be played some more. But someone took the story. They fabricated the fact that he had said John Muckler doesn't like French-Canadian players. It got all blown out of proportion. I was talking to him just before the game. He says, hey, all I want to do is play. I want to work hard, and I want a chance. Tonight he's getting that chance. He apologized to his teammates and made it clear to the press before the game he did not say those things. Howard Chuck moves in. Howard Chuck centered for Keith Carney. Comes to the near side, and uh, it'll be the Canadians' Bellows bringing it up. Bellows intercepted. Howard Chuck had it momentarily. Lehman took it back. Lehman just drops it back. So it'll be the goal. Picked up third in the game for Buffalo by Donald Audette, his seventh of the year. Ledger gets the assist at the nine-minute mark. Wah watches that one go wide. Breeze Wah banked it off the boards for Bellows. Bellows got it out to Lehman in the middle. Knocked down by Keith Carney. Bellows comes back to get it at his own blue line. 10.08 left to go here in the third period. With the Canadiens up by a score of 7-3. to three. In behind the net, Sutton. Ken Sutton. Damfus drives him back the other way. Sutton moving to the middle again. Sutton drops it off LaFontaine with Himmelet. LaFontaine down the middle, squeezed out of the play. He's got knocked down by Sean Hill, the rookie. Sutton lost his stick, tried to glove it ahead. McGillney moves in to help out. Kurt Muller is there. Muller knocks it away to LeClaire. John LeClaire leaves it for Muller. Muller to LeClaire. Sutton on him. Sutton ties him up, takes him to the boards. Bodger in the corner with Muller. Backed up behind the net. Hasek moved out to get it. LeClaire knew he had an empty net, but he couldn't control the puck. McGillney, he can't either. J.J. Daniels got it. Sabres changing it up on the fly here with 9.17 to go in the third. Ledger tried to steal. Couldn't from Mike Keane to LeClaire. LeClaire back to Keane. Keane, LeClaire. Bodger on him. LeClaire centered in the crease. Bob Sweeney came away with it. LeClaire drops it back in. Wrapped around hard by Ledger. Held it at the point. Brisebois. Keane drops it in the middle. Sweeney goes back to get it. And Sweeney will start from behind his own net. Buffalo's woes on the road continue. They lose here tonight. It'll be their 17th road loss. They are averaging two goals a game more at home than they are on the road. Part of that, obviously, with the power play that's last on the road in the league, but that is something they have got to be very concerned with. Belanger dumped it ahead. Back for Dion. Dion looking. Dion centered. Belanger spun around in front. Couldn't get to it. And Audette will dump it out of the zone. Haller knocks it down, sends it back in. Ledger over to get it. Grant Ledger. Cannon. Cannon. Dropped it off. Buffalo trying to get back in. Bobby Corkum. Corkum dropped it to Audette. Waugh came out. Audette on the boards. Hit by Desjardins. Still controlled it to Corkum. Keith Carney circling. Knocked away by Hill. Hill jams it up. Buffalo's not surrendering here. Jimmy was talking about. They're trying to keep pressure on. Touched up, 7-3 for him in Montreal. 7.53 left in the third. The Canadiens up. Patrick Waugh looking on. He's 16-8-2 at home this season. 10-8-3 and three on the road. Waugh goes back to get it. A pretty comfortable game for him thus far, at least. It'll be held in. Behind the net, May bounces back out in front of the point. Sutton, far side, linesman moving in. It'll separate a couple of players as Ewan was over there. Ray, and they're still going at it with high sticks. Picked up by Sutton. And here we go. glove up on Ray. We welcome those of you watching the Rangers Edmonton. Gary Thorne, Jim Schoenfeld here. The Canadians lead Buffalo 7-3. Ray is ready to go with Ewan. We have had three players lost in this game already with instigator calls and game misconducts. Don Lee and Randy Wood in the first period. Lau Odeline in the second period for the Canadians. And we'll have more penalties called here. Those of you watching the Ranger game with the Rangers and Edmonton looking for playoff points for the Rangers in the Patrick division. 
those are the current standings as a result of games today. Pittsburgh tied, Washington lost, Devils won, and the Islanders won. It is a real battle, and that will continue here on ESPN next Friday night, 7.30 Eastern, 4.30 Pacific. And Mario Lemieux may be back next week. And if so, could be in that game. We'll see Messier and the Rangers, who have just underplayed it all year long. Who would have thought the Rangers were going to be in a battle for a playoff spot going into the final 20 games of the season? Well, they are. Pittsburgh is also trying to get the number one spot in the league. Montreal has gone ahead of them. They are the number one team right now, the Canadiens, and they're going to add to it tonight. Well, the Sabres is uh, back in another power play. You see Robert's got the extra two minutes and all that altercation, and Kaharski wasted no time in getting Rob Ray and Todd Ewan right out of the game. So the two big heavyweights from both teams are eliminated with seven minutes and 15 seconds remaining to play, partner. That's how it all started over there along the boards. LaFontaine couldn't get it, cleared out. Power play underway here for the Buffalo Sabres. The Sabres, three goals and two of them have come on the power play. Pat LaFontaine had those in the first period. McGillney has been held scoreless. There's LaFontaine, the league's leading scorer, adding two goals tonight. Now LaFontaine was able to stay up. Sweeney moves over and puts the hit on. Puck comes to the middle. Now behind the play. Here we go again. Sweeney. Sweeney. Sweeney, Sweeney came looking. over and tried to protect his own player that time. Sweeney's been looking the last couple of shifts. He's had a couple of chippy shifts. Given the last shove, the last push. And DeJarn wanted none of that. Maybe now he's thinking he should have just taken the shove. But you can't. Desjardin has been an absolute standout in tonight's game on the Montreal Blue Line. He has played a whale of a game at both ends of the ring, done an extremely good job killing, killing penalties, especially the five-on-three penalty he killed. And you can see LaFontaine coming in. Desjardin gets a stick in, but Desjardin, LaFontaine, uses a little leverage to push him off. He's a little bit stunned right there, and Sweeney gives him another shot before he can get up to his feet. Well, he's going to give Sweeney a shot back, and there they go. Push comes to shove, off come the gloves. And no one's really the worst for wear. There were no big haymakers landed. Most of the tough guys are gone from the game. Donnelly early in the game for the Sabres. Rob Ray, the shift before this was ejected. Todd Ewan is gone for the Habs. And Robert is sitting in the penalty box right now. So we may get some hockey played in this last six minutes, 45 seconds. It's a struggle right now just to keep it under control. Those of you who are waiting on the Suzuki Cup Finals motorcycle racing, I want to remind you that that's going to be coming along just as soon as we are done here at the Forum, the ESPN's National Hockey Night, the Suzuki Cup Finals coming up here on ESPN. Just hang in with us. Face-off will be outside the blue line here. 6.45 left to go here in the third period, and John Koharski continues to pile up the penalties. Right now, the Canadians look as though they're going to be at a two-man disadvantage. We have had as many two-man advantages in this game as I've seen this season. It started out rough and tough in the first period, and it stayed that way, and as the game got out of control score-wise, We've been right on the verge. And again, the Murs elects to go with one defenseman and two forwards, Muller and Keane. However, before the one defenseman he was using was Desjardins. Desjardins right now is in the box, so that duty will be picked up by J.J. Daniel, the senior member of this Montreal defensive corps. Keane uh, Keen is out there, rather, with Muller. Desjardins heading to the dressing room, I do believe. We'll get this started again momentarily. Let's check in with Jack. All right, uh, Gary, the goals are coming quickly in L.A. Rookie defenseman Daryl Sidor with a pretty cross-ice speed to Luke Robitaille from a 1-0 deficit. The Kings score twice in 42 seconds, and now they lead in the first period. Let's go back to the forum and Gary Thorne. All right, the penalties were picked up at 13-15. Sweeney got a fighting. Desjardins high sticking and five for fighting. So it's a two-man advantage now for the Buffalo Sabres. Picked up by Bodger. Dropped off for LaFontaine. McGillney scores! Alexander McGillney picks up the power play goal and makes it a 
7-4 game. That is a five-on-three power play goal. Patrick Waugh shaking his head. Keen blocked the initial shot coming in. He's a little hurt. He has a difficult time skating. LaFontaine spots his partner. The deadliest duo in the league. McGillney wastes no time. A one-timer beats Waugh as he's going down. And uh, it might be a little early to say don't go away, folks. But the Sabres do have some punch in those two guys. They're going to get a lot of ice time in the remaining six minutes of this hockey game. And again, the Habs are still a man short, so we'll have to see what this Sabre power play can do. So, Patty LaFontaine continuing to set up Alexander McGillney. And for McGillney, a league-leading 43 goals. 22 of them have come on the power play. And the Sabres bench stood up, applauded, haul it out to the guys on the ice. But there's still time. 6-12 to go. Pass intended for Bodger comes to center. Problem often seen in uh, sports. When one team gets so far ahead of the other, it's tough to maintain that drive and the Canadians are struggling with that here in the third period. Yeah, we mentioned the Buffalo had to have a sound period to, to gain some respectability. The Canadians have to mount up and play this period for Patrick Waugh. He kept him in the game early. They want to keep the goals against Al for him, so that should be enough to inspire his teammates to play sound defensive hockey the remainder of this game. Still a power play for Buffalo. Sutton shot, deflected wide, picked up and uh, cleared up and over the glass by Gary Lehman. 7-4 now with 51 seconds left on the Canadiens' penalty. Alexander McGillney, as we said, on top as far as the goal scorers are concerned. Those are the leaders in the National Hockey League. 63 for him now. Pavel Bure, 49, and Solani and Iserman at 47. McGillney's last goal at 13-33. The assist going to LaFontaine and Bodger. And the Buffalo Sabres, I think, are going to use their timeout right here. The Canadiens used their timeout in the first period of this game when they had a two-man disadvantage. And Buffalo's using theirs right now with 5.36 left to go. This is a good time for Demers just to re Remember, coming into this period, we had a five-goal lead. We don't want to get into the habit of missing our defensive assignments. We do not want to get into the habit where we think first effort is going to be enough. We got seven goals, and we kept the Sabres at two because we had second and third effort and played well all over the ice. I want to remind you, the women's tennis coming up tomorrow will be the Matrix Everett Cup Championship. Mary Jo Fernandez, the number one seed, against Fernanda Coutier, the fourth seed. That will be the Grand Champions Resort, Indian Wells, California location, tomorrow 3.30, or 3 o'clock Eastern and noon Pacific. That's right here on ESPN tomorrow. Pat LaFontaine and Dion taking the faceoff, comes back to Bodger. Power play for another 46 seconds for Buffalo. If they could get one here, they are really back into this game with 5.26 left to go. Absolutely right. Power Chuck back in his own end. This is the kind of discipline we did not see from this team in the second period for the Sabres. Wow, just let it go. LaFontaine going back for it. That's going to be touched up for Ison. What a great play by Patrick Waugh. Very subtly comes out. He fakes to the Sabres that he's going to play the puck. More importantly, he fakes to Gaharski because then he can run a little pick on Patty LaFontaine. Enables his defenseman that half second to get back. Touch the puck. Comes all the way back into the Sabres zone. And that's where Montreal would love the faceoff to be. See Patrick Waugh's numbers as he's going for number 27 tonight. Ed Belfour on top, followed by Tom Barrasso, and then what a turnaround season, Ron Hextall, part of that big deal going to Quebec. And Wah right now, I'm sure, a little less confident about that win than he was about two minutes ago. Off the faceoff, Canadiens Brisebois. Brisebois hit by Himalev. Howard Chuck knocks it down. Should mention Pat LaFontaine with his points tonight now has 114, a brand new record for the Buffalo Sabres for points in a season. Himalev going back, Himalev plays it, and there's the whistle. The faceoff is going to stay to the right of Patrick Waugh. There's the heart and soul of the Buffalo Sabres. He's done it all for them all year. A lot of talk about McGillney, rightly so with the goals he scores, but I do not think McGillney would have near the number of goals if it wasn't for the center, Pat LaFontaine getting him the puck. His speed is intimidating. He backs defenders off the line. They have to double-team him when he drives to the net. Alexander is open. The puck comes over there. He has an exceptional shot, and so you get the points for LaFontaine, the goals for Alexander McGillney. 
Bill Bear Perot had the old record, 75-76, 113 points. So LaFontaine's going to beat that by a long distance. Off the face off, DiPietro cleared out of the zone. Nobody touched it. Patrick Waugh has it rolled through the crease, lets it go for the touch-up and another icing call as Kevin Haller went back to get it. Haller, former Buffalo Sabre, now with the Montreal Canadiens. There was a lot of talk in Buffalo about that deal. Everybody thought that Svoboda would stabilize the Sabre defense, and he has come to Buffalo and done a good job. However, he is injured and out for the season. Haller coming to the Canadiens was Jacques LaPerriere behind the bench as he emerged as a tremendous, tremendous hockey player. And he's going to get better every year. He's only 21 years old, folks. Face-off will be to the left of Dominic Hasek, who came in for Grant Fuhr here in this third period. Dave Pietro lost that one. Sutton's got it. Sutton clears it out the center. Brought up by Dave Hannon. Hannon drops it off for Audet. Audet had it kicked away. And Dion tipped it out of the zone. Sutton sends it back in. For those of you looking for motocross, you're going to have to wait. March 13th, Saturday at 1.30. Dampus in. Shot. Save. Hasek. Rebound. Kick free to Hannon in the net. Comes off the mooring. And so they'll have to finish that up. For those of you waiting for motocross, the Suzuki Cup Final will be Saturday, March 13th, 1.30 a.m. 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 I've been in bed an hour and a half. I've been trying to figure out on. what that's about. <laughs> Jack, it's all yours. All right, Jerry, uh, St. Louis chasing Minnesota for fourth place in the Norris Division. And on the power play, it's Craig Janney working it back to Nelson Everson to Jeff Brown, down to Brendan Shanahan. 3-2 St. Louis now leads the North Stars in the final five minutes. Back to the forum. And 4.18 left to go in this one as the Montreal Canadiens just trying desperately to run this clock down and hang on to this 7-4 lead that they've got. We'll have Sports Center coming along to update you on all the day's sports activities as soon as this one's completed. For the viewers who joined us in the last couple of minutes, it's a shame because it was a well of a hockey game up until this third period. The Montreal Canadiens playing almost flawless hockey tonight completely dominating the Buffalo Sabres. J.J. Daniel Bellows has picked up four goals in this game for the Montreal Canadiens. Pat LaFontaine has had a couple for the Buffalo Sabres. Power shot, tipping it into the zone. Battle for it with LeClaire. LeClaire, Keith Carney comes out on Hasek, and he covers with Bellows looking for yet another one. 3.54 remaining in the third. Canadiens up by three. Well, welcome back to the Forum. Montreal leading here at home 7-4. For those of you who were tuning in for the Suzuki Cup Final, Sports Center is going to be next. In front, shot jammed at. Muller scores. It counts. Kirk Muller by Dominic Hasek. Buffalo's going to argue about people in the crease and penalties in front of it but Kirk Muller stood there found the loose puck and it is an 8-4 Canadiens lead Kaharski seems very definitely sure that the puck hit the back of the net and came out not the crossbar he's going over now to the timekeeper and we'll see whether he calls upstairs for the video goal judge or if he'll just give this goal to Kirk Muller and the face is going to center ice. No phone call made. And Captain Kirk has himself another goal. So Muller has picked up two in the game. He's now up to 32 on the season. And they have equaled their high for goal scored this season. Third time they've had eight. And Kaharski made another great call. Don Kaharski not missing much in tonight's game. That puck is in and out. And it's 8-4 Montreal. Cleared into the seats, touched a stick or glass, and Hasek's not going to be called for delay a game. We're pushing it up into the seats. 3.40 remaining to go here in the third period. 16-14, the time of the goal. We told you the Buffalo Sabres, the most offensive-minded team in the National Hockey League, but look at the Montreal Canadiens. They've added to it tonight with an eight-goal game. Sixth and climbing. Mm -mm -mm. Yuck, 
the Muse team putting on a show. Breeze Bois sends it in. Hasek knocks it down. Sutton goes back to get it. But for Buffalo, they did come back and put together some play in this third period. McGillney knocked away from him, showing some patience here in the third and some control. Muller sending it in wide. He's got a chance at the hat trick now. Of course, LaFontaine also does. Set up by Sutton. McGillney tipped it. Sean Hill sends it right back out. LaFontaine backed it up to the blue line. Himalev trying to move in, takes the hit check. Got knocked down by Hill. Hill is another one of the exciting young players this Canadiens team has. They are very high on the 23-year-old U.S. Olympic team, University of Wisconsin College hockey. Where's number 38 out there? Played a lot tonight, is playing a lot with the injuries that the Canadians have had and has been solid. Ledger, all the way down on Patrick Waugh, who blocks it, ships it off into the corner. Down to two minutes, 34 seconds remaining to go. Kevin Haller got it out of the zone. Bodger's going to have to chase it down. Hassock coming out to play it. Audette has picked up a goal tonight. Off for Bodger. Bodger pushes it ahead. Cannon can't get it. Pass behind him. Flip deeper into the zone. Daniel goes back. Daniel clears it up near side. Canadiens. Robert. Ledger looking around to see who's with him. Ledger will take the hit, but he did see it coming as he got nailed by Jesse Belanger. Belanger has played a tough game here tonight. Cannon breaking down the middle. Decided to drop it back. Ledger the shot. Blocker save made by Patrick Waugh. Minute 55 to go. Montreal Canadiens, an impressive performance here tonight. Well, they aren't playing with the same intensity right now, but they are finishing all their checks. They're still going, bumping the Sabres off the puck. They're trying to keep in the habit of doing the little things right. That's a very important thing for a team that jumps out into a big lead the way the Canadians did. It's easy to get yourself into bad habits for the remainder of that game. And I'm sure Jacques Demers is reminding them, play the game until the end buzzer goes. Don't take any shortcuts because you end up paying for it somewhere along the line, maybe the beginning of the next game. Finish strong and you have something to build on and that's what the Canadians have done tonight. The Sabres, although they did come back a little bit in the third period, I don't think they're going to feel very good about no. this game. It's not like they mounted a big attack. Montreal laid back a little bit, allowed them to come to them. So the Sabres have to be very disappointed in each other, disappointed in themselves. A lot of soul searching, and I think from upper management, a lot of searching for some players to fill some very good holes in the Sabre roster. Yeah, they did. This has been a uh, this is a disastrous night for the Buffalo Sabres. Especially when the game was built up. Buffalo eyes to be such an important game this entire series but they lost the home game they finished it with a great flurry of fights showing that they're going to be a team to be reckoned with tonight they came in here and they've been dominated from the get-go yeah absolutely Canadians have put a beating on them winning last night six to four offside two line pass Canadians are going to pick up their 40th win of the season go 40 19 and 6 here tonight remain the best team in the National Hockey League the Buffalo Sabres will be 31 24 and 7 and uh, Montreal will continue to win at home their 24th against only eight losses and on the road well Buffalo's going to suffer their 17th loss and that problem will continue for them for Montreal as far as their battle here in the division they still have games remaining against the teams that are chasing them you see Quebec one away and two at home Boston They've got to play them three times in Boston once here in Buffalo, still with those games remaining. So it is far from decided who's going to finish where in this division. Final minute of play. Ledger will take it in behind the net. Ronan going back after him. Sutton trying to clear it up. Dion had moved in. Sweeney at center. Pushed it to McGillney. McGillney to Himalev. Had it broken up by Brisebois. Brisebois. Belanger has it. Jesse Belanger circling, trying to dump it in. Ronan brought it in and offside, stopping the clock at...